Chapter 1, I'm by Siachun. Mounted lay in the Eastwood Mountain Range, and at its base was a quaint little village. The villagers there lived off the land and didn't have much to do with the outside world. Currently it was dawn, and the villagers were congregated at the village gate to see off a young man of 15 or 16 years of age. He seemed thin and weak, but had a healthy, fair complexion and an overall charming appearance. He wore an ordinary green robe that had apparently been washed so many times it was nearly worn through. Something about the way he was dressed, plus the innocent look in his eyes, made him seem exceptionally quick-witted. His name was Bai Xiaochun. Dear elders and fellow villagers, he said, I am on my way to learn about immortal cultivation. I shall miss all of you. The young man wore a slightly pained expression, as if he couldn't bear to part with his fellow villagers. This made him look even more charming than before. The surrounding villagers exchanged glances, shrugged helplessly, and then pretended to look even more reluctant to see him leave. A white-haired old man stepped out of the crowd and said, Xiao Chun, ever since your dad and mom left us, oh so long ago, you, you have been, er, he paused for a moment, such a good kid. Seeing that Bai Xiao Chun hadn't left yet, he continued, don't tell me you're not interested in living forever. All you have to do is become an immortal, and then you can live forever. That's a really, really long time. Well, it's time for you to leave now. Even a baby eagle must learn to fly eventually. No matter what situations you run into out there, you have to hang in there and keep moving forward. Once you leave the village, you can't come back because your path will always lie ahead, not behind. The old man patted Bai Xiaochun kindly on the shoulder. Live forever. Bai Xiaochun murmured. A tremor ran through him and a look of determination slowly filled his eyes. Under the encouraging gazes of the old man and the other villagers, he nodded his head seriously and looked around at everyone one last time. Finally, he turned and walked away from the village. As he disappeared off into the distance, the villagers started to look more and more excited. Their forlorn expressions turned to those of joy, and the kind-faced old man began to tremble. Tears even streamed down his face. Justice from heaven! The weasel is finally gone. Who was it that told him they saw an immortal in the area? Whoever it was, I'm going to give you a huge reward on behalf of the village. The village was soon echoing with cries of rejoicing. Some people even took out gongs and drums and began banging them excitedly. The weasel is gone, someone said, but oh, my poor chickens. He hated the roosters crowing at dawn, so he somehow got all the kids in the village to eat every chicken we had. Today is the beginning of a new era. By this point, Bai Xiaochun was still fairly close to the village and could actually hear the sounds of the gongs and drums. He even caught wind of some of the cries of excitement. He stopped in his tracks, a strange expression on his face. After a moment, he cleared his throat and proceeded on his way. Accompanied by the faint sounds of rejoicing, he began to make his way toward Mount Hood. Mount Hood wasn't a very tall mountain, but it was covered with thick vegetation. Therefore, despite the fact that it was dawn, beneath the trees, it was dark and quiet. Double Dog told me that he was hunting some wild pigs a few days ago and saw an immortal flying around. Bai Xiaochun proceeded along, heart thumping. Suddenly, a rustling sound could be heard from some nearby shrubs. It almost sounded like a wild pig, and it immediately caused Bai Xiaochun to grow extremely nervous. The hair on the back of his neck stood up straight as he asked, Who is it? Who's there? He quickly pulled four axes and six machetes out of his travel pack, but that in and of itself didn't make him feel much safer, so he also produced a bit of black incense from within his robe, which he clutched tightly in his left hand. Don't come out, he shouted, trembling. Don't even think about coming out. I've got axes and machetes, and this incense can call lightning from the heavens and even summon immortals. If you dare to show your face, you're dead. Finally, he turned and ran toward the mountain path, simultaneously jibbling all of the various weapons in his hands. Clanking sounds could eventually be heard as axes and machetes began to fall to the ground left and right. Perhaps whatever it was that had been rustling around in the shrubbery really did end up getting frightened by him. The sound ceased, and no wild animal burst out of the bushes. Bai Xiaochun hurried toward the mountain, wiping the sweat from his brow. By this point, his face was pale, and he was almost considering giving up this crazy idea of climbing the mountain, but then he thought about the incense stick, which his parents had handed down to him before they died. 
Supposedly, it had been passed down from their ancestors, a gift bestowed by a down-and-out immortal they had saved. Before departing, the immortal had given it to them to pay back the kindness they had shown. Furthermore, the immortal had even promised to take a member of the Bai clan as a disciple. He told them that merely burning the incense stick would summon him to their side. Bai Xiaochun had actually lit the incense stick more than ten times in the past few years, and yet, no immortal had ever shown up. It had eventually reached the point that Bai Xiaochun was starting to suspect whether or not the story about the immortal was even true. Finally, he'd resolved to climb the mountain. For one thing, the incense stick was almost used up, and also, there was the matter of the flying immortal being sighted recently. And that was how he ended up in his current situation. His theory was that if he could get a bit closer to the immortal, then perhaps it would be easier for that immortal to sense the incense stick. Standing in front of the mountain, he hesitated for a moment, then gritted his teeth and decided to keep going. Thankfully, the mountain wasn't very high, and it didn't take long to reach the peak, where he stopped, panting. He looked at the village down below, and an emotional expression appeared on his face. Then he glanced at the fingernail-sized bit of black incense. It had clearly been burned on numerous occasions, and was almost completely used up. It's been three years. Bless me, Mom and Dad. It has to work this time. Bai Xiaochun took a deep breath, and then carefully lit the incense. A stiff breeze instantly kicked up, and in the blink of an eye, dark clouds filled the sky. Lightning crackled, and deafening thunder boomed in his ears. The majesty of the entire scene caused Bai Xiaochun to tremble, fearful that he might be killed by the lightning. He very nearly spit on the incense to extinguish it, but managed to hold back. I've lit this incense twelve times in the past three years, and this is the thirteenth time. I have to let it burn. Come on, Xiaochun. The lightning won't kill you. At least probably not. All twelve times that he had lit the incense in the past, there had been lightning and thunder, and yet no immortal had ever appeared. Each time, he had gotten so scared that he spit on the incense to put it out. He actually found it a bit strange that a supposedly immortal stick of incense could be extinguished with some ordinary saliva. Bai Xiaochun sat there shaking in fear as the thunder boomed around him. Suddenly, a streak of light appeared in the air off in the distance. It was a middle-aged man wearing luxurious clothing. He had the demeanor of a transcendent being, yet he looked weary and travel-worn. In fact, if you looked closely, his eyes seemed to flicker with extreme exhaustion. Finally, I can see exactly what moron has been lighting that incense stick all the time for the past three years. Every time the man thought about what he had experienced during the past few years, he got extremely annoyed. Three years ago, he had sensed the medicinal aura of an incense stick he had given away back when he was in the chi condensation stage. That immediately caused him to recall the debt he owed back in the mortal world. The first time he flew out in response to the incense stick being lit, he had assumed it would be a simple matter of heading out and then immediately returning. He had never imagined that before even being able to find the incense, its aura would suddenly vanish, severing his connection to it. If it had happened only once, it wouldn't have been a big deal. However, over the course of three years, the aura had appeared more than ten times. Over and over again his search was interrupted, ensuring that he was constantly leaving his sect and then going back. Back and forth, back and forth. It was torment. As he closed in on Mount Hood, he caught sight of Bai Xiaochun. Fuming with numerous frustrations, the man landed on the mountaintop and waved his hand, instantly extinguishing the sputtering incense stick. The thunder ceased, and Bai Xiaochun stared at the man in shock. Are you an immortal? Bai Xiaochun asked cautiously. Still unsure about what exactly was going on, he slipped his hand behind his back and grabbed an axe. You may call me Li Qingho. Are you from the Bai clan? The middle-aged cultivator's eyes shone like lightning as he measured up Bai Xiaochun, ignoring the axe behind his back. To him, Bai Xiaochun seemed delicate, almost pretty, and reminded him of his old friend from years ago. Furthermore, his latent talent seemed suitable. Li Qingho's anger gradually began to fade. Bai Xiaochun blinked a few times. Although he was still a bit scared, he sat up straight and quietly said, Junior most definitely is from the Bai clan. I'm Bai Xiaochun. All right, well tell me this, Li Qingho said, his voice cool. Why did you light that incense so many times over the past three years? He very much wanted to know the answer to this question. 
As soon as Bai Xiaochun heard the question, his mind spun as he tried to come up with a good answer. Finally, a melancholic expression appeared on his face, and he looked down toward the village at the bottom of the mountain. Junior is a sentimental and righteous person, he said. I simply couldn't bear to part with my fellow villagers. Every time I lit the incense, I was overwhelmed with feelings of sorrow. The mere thought of leaving them behind was far too painful. Li Qingho stared in shock. He had never considered such a possibility, and as such, the anger in his heart faded even more. He could tell from this young man's words alone that he was definitely good material. However, the next thing he did was send his divine sense down toward the village, and he heard the sounds of drums and gongs and rejoicing. He even heard the villagers talking about how glad they were that the weasel was gone. An unsightly expression appeared on his face, and he felt a headache coming on. He looked back at the charming and pure by Xiaochun, who seemed like he wouldn't hurt a fly, and suddenly realized that this kid was a villain to the core. Tell me the truth. Li Qingho said, his voice echoing like thunder. Bai Xiaochun was so frightened that he started shaking. Hey, you can't blame me. Bai Xiaochun said, sounding very miserable. What kind of crappy incense is this anyway? Every time I lit it, lightning would start crashing around everywhere. I almost got killed on several occasions. In fact, avoiding that lightning 13 times was quite a feat. Li Qingho looked silently at Bai Xiaochun. If you were so scared, then why did you light it over 10 times? He asked. Because I'm scared of dying. Bai Xiaochun replied indignantly. Isn't the point of immortal cultivation to be able to live forever? I want to live forever. Li Qingho was once again struck speechless. However, he found the kid's fascination with living forever laudable and realized that his personality might change a bit after some hard training in the sect. After a moment of thought, he waved his sleeve, sweeping by Xiaochun up into a beam of light that shot off into the distance. All right, come with me, he said. Where are we going? asked by Xiaochun, suddenly realizing that they were flying. Ah, we're so high. The ground was very, very far down, causing the blood to drain from his face. He immediately dropped his axe and grabbed onto the immortal's leg. Li Qingho looked down at him clutching his leg. Feeling a bit at a loss, he replied, the spirit stream sect. Chapter 2, The Ovens Eight enormous cloud-wreathed mountains towered over the heaven-span river. Four of those mountains were located on the north bank of the river, whereas three were on the south bank. Shockingly, one mountain, the most majestic of them all, rose up from the middle of the river itself. The entire top half of that mountain was covered with brilliant white snow and rose up so high that the peak of the mountain wasn't even visible. The middle of the mountain had been hollowed out, allowing the Golden River water to flow right through it and causing the mountain itself to somewhat resemble a bridge. Currently, a beam of light was speeding along near the south bank of the Spirit Stream sect. It was none other than Li Qingho and Bai Xiaochun. As they raced into the servants' quarters beneath the third peak, it was just possible to hear Bai Xiaochun shouting out in fear. He was scared to death from all the flying. They had passed over countless mountains, and the entire time, he had felt like he was losing his grip on Li Qingho's leg. Eventually, everything turned into a blur. When everything finally became clear again, he realized that they had landed just outside of a building. He stood there, legs trembling, looking around at a scene that was very different from what he was used to back at the village. Towering up in front of the building was a huge stone, upon which three characters were written in flamboyant calligraphy. Department of Servant Affairs. Sitting next to the stone was a pock-faced woman. As soon as she caught sight of Li Qingho, she rose to her feet and clasped hands in greeting. Send this kid to the ovens, Li Qingho said. Without another word, and paying no further heed to Bai Xiaochun, he then transformed into a beam of light that shot off into the distance. When the pock-faced woman heard him mention the ovens, she stared in shock. She looked Bai Xiaochun over, then handed him a bag which contained a servant's uniform and other items. Face expressionless, led him away from the building toward a nearby path, simultaneously explaining some of the basic sect rules and customs. The path was paved with green limestone and wound through numerous buildings and courtyards. The fragrant aroma of plants and flowers filled the air, and the entire place seemed like a celestial paradise. As he looked around, Bai Xiaochun's heart began to thump with excitement, and his previous nervousness and anxiety began to fade. This place is awesome, he thought. It's way better than the village. His eyes shone with anticipation as he followed the woman along. 
the scenery only continued to get more and more spectacular. He even saw some beautiful women along the way, which instantly caused his heart to surge with delight. Soon, Bai Xiaochun got even more excited. That was because he caught sight of what appeared to be their destination. At the end of the path was a seven-story building that sparkled like crystal. There were even celestial cranes soaring in the air above it. Are we there yet, elder sister? Bai Xiaochun asked excitedly. Yes, she replied coolly, her face as expressionless as ever. She pointed to a small path off to the side. That's where we're going. Bai Xiaochun looked in the direction she was pointing, heart bursting with anticipation. But then, his entire body went stiff, and he rubbed his eyes. He looked again, a bit more closely, and saw a gravel path lined by haphazardly constructed thatch roof huts that looked like they might disintegrate at any moment. A strange aroma wafted out from the area. Bai Xiaochun wanted to cry, but no tears would come. Still clinging to a scrap of hope, he asked the pock-faced woman another question. Elder sister, did you point in the wrong direction just now? Nope, she replied coolly, stepping onto the gravel path. When Bai Xiaochun heard her response, all of the beauty of the place seemed to disappear. A bitter expression appeared on his face as he continued to follow her. Before long, he caught sight of the end of the decrepit path, where he saw several huge black walks running around. After a moment, he realized that the walks were actually attached to the backs of several incredibly fat men. These men were so obese that it seemed like squeezing them would cause pure fat to ooze out. One of the men was even fatter than the others, so fat that he looked like a mountain of flesh. Bai Xiaochun was even worried that the man might explode from being so fat. The entire area was filled with hundreds of huge cooking walks, within which fat men were boiling rice. Sensing that someone had approached, the men looked up and saw the pock-faced woman. The fattest of the men, the one who looked like a mountain of flesh, hefted his ladle and hurried over. The ground trembled as he walked and his fat bounced and jiggled in a way that made Bai Xiaochun stare in shock. Without even thinking about it, he began to feel around for an axe. The magpies were signing especially beautiful songs this morning, and now I know why, the mountain of flesh cried out as he ran over. His eyes flickered with a lustful gleam. It was all because you were coming, big sis. Could it be that you've changed your mind? You finally realized how talented I am and want to take advantage of this auspicious day to formally become my beloved partner? The pock-faced woman looked at the mountain of flesh with both disgust and anger. I'm just here to deliver this kid to the ovens, she said. Task accomplished. I'll take my leave now. Then she hurried off. Bai Xiaochun gasped. He had taken the time to check out the woman on their way here, and she really looked like a freak. He couldn't help but wonder what kind of taste this fat man had. Apparently even someone with a face like hers got him all hot and bothered. Before Bai Xiaochun could consider the matter any more, the mountain of flesh was suddenly standing in front of him, panting a bit. The man was so huge that Bai Xiaochun found himself completely covered by his shadow. Bai Xiaochun looked up at the enormous man and his quivering rolls of flesh and swallowed hard. This was actually his first time ever seeing someone so fat. The mountain of flesh glanced resentfully at the pock-faced woman, who was making her way back up the gravel path, then looked back at Bai Xiaochun. Well, well, we have a newcomer. We'd left a spot open for Su Baokai to join, so this complicates matters. Bai Xiaochun felt nervous just looking at the man's huge frame and subconsciously took a few steps back. Elder brother, I am your humble, or humble servant Bai Xiaochun. Bai Xiaochun? Hmm. White skin, slender and dainty. You look pretty innocent. Excellent, excellent. Your name really fits my taste. The mountain of flesh looked him over, then clapped Bai Xiaochun on the shoulder, which very nearly sent Bai Xiaochun flying off to the side. Uh, what's your name, elder brother? Bai Xiaochun took a deep breath and looked up thoughtfully as he prepared to make fun of the man's name. The mountain of flesh chuckled and slapped his chest, causing the fat to ripple back and forth. I'm Big Fatty Zhang. That's second Fatty Huang, and that's third Fatty Hei. As soon as Bai Xiaochun heard these incredibly stirring names, he abandoned any plans to make fun of them. As for you, Big Fatty Zhang continued, from now on, you'll be ninth Fatty Bai. Air. Er. Wait a second, junior brother. You're way too skinny. If you go around looking like that, you'll lose face for the ovens. Well, I guess that doesn't matter for now. Don't worry. 
After a few years, you'll get fat too. Then we'll call you Ninth Fatty Bai. When Bai Xiaochun heard the nickname Ninth Fatty Bai, he grimaced. Well, since you're already our ninth junior brother, you don't count as an outsider anymore. Here in the ovens, we have a long-standing tradition of carrying woks on our backs. See this wok here on my back? He slapped the wok and continued boastfully, it's the king of woks, forged from the highest quality iron and engraved with an earth flame spell formation. When you use this wok to cook up spirit rice, the flavor is far, far better than the rice cooked in any other wok. By the way, you'll have to choose a wok to carry on your back, too. Then you'll look really impressive. Glancing at Big Fatty Zhang's wok and realizing that everyone else in the ovens was similarly adorned, Bai Xiaochun suddenly got an image of himself walking around in such a fashion. Elder brother, he blurted, is it possible to opt out of the wok carrying thing? Are you kidding me? Wok carrying is an important tradition in the ovens. Later on when you're out in the sect, people will see the wok on your back and instantly recognize that you're from the ovens. Once they know that, they won't dare to pick on you. The ovens has a lot of influence around here, you know. Big Fatty Zhang winked at Bai Xiaochun. Allowing no further discussion of the matter, he led Bai Xiaochun to one of the thatch roof huts, within which were stacks of thousands of woks, most of which were covered in layers of dust. Clearly, no one had been in here for quite some time. Go ahead and pick one, ninth junior brother, then come on over and help tend to the rice. If the rice burns, then the outer sect disciples will make a scene again. Letting out a holler, Big Fatty Zhang turned and ran back to join the other fat men as they hustled and bustled amongst the more than 100 cooking woks. Sighing in despair, Bai Xiaochun looked over the woks and was agonizing over which one to pick when he suddenly noticed one particular wok off in the corner, buried under a big pile. It was a unique wok that, instead of being circular, was shaped like an oval. It almost didn't even look like an oval, but rather, like a turtle shell. There were also some faint markings visible on its surface. E. Bai Xiaochun's eyes brightened, and he quickly walked over and squatted down to look at the wok more closely. After dragging it out and examining it further, his eyes began to shine with satisfaction. He had been fond of turtles ever since he was young, mostly because they represented longevity. Considering that he had come to learn about immortal cultivation for the purposes of living forever, as soon as he saw the turtle shell walk, he knew that it was an auspicious sign, a good omen. After he emerged with the walk, Big Fatty Zhang caught sight of him and hurried over, ladle in hand. Ninth junior brother, why did you pick that one? He asked sincerely, rubbing his ample belly. That walk has been in there for years, and nobody has ever used it, mainly because it looks like a turtle shell and people don't want to put it on their backs. Um, are you sure, Ninth Junior Brother? I'm sure. Bai Xiaochun said resolutely, looking fondly at the wok. This is the wok for me. Big Fatty Zhang tried to dissuade him some more, but eventually realized that Bai Xiaochun had made up his mind. Finally, he gave him a strange look and stopped trying. After assigning him one of the oven's thatch roof huts for housing, he went back to work. Soon, dusk had fallen. Bai Xiaochun sat in his thatch roofed hut, examining the turtle-shaped wok. One thing that stuck out to him were the designs traced on the back of the wok, which were so faint that you wouldn't see them unless you looked closely. He could instantly tell that this was no ordinary wok. Carefully putting it on the stove, he looked around the little hut. It was very simple. In addition to the stove, it had a bed, a desk, and an ordinary copper mirror hanging on the wall. As Bai Xiaochun had his head turned to look around, the seemingly ordinary walk behind him suddenly emitted a flash of violet light. As far as Bai Xiaochun was concerned, this had been a day packed with all sorts of momentous events. He had finally arrived in the land of his dreams, a world of immortals. At the moment, he was still in a bit of a daze. After a bit of time passed, he took a deep breath, and his eyes began to shine with anticipation. I'm gonna live forever. As he sat there, he pulled out the bag which the pock-faced woman had given him. Inside the bag was a medicinal pill, a wooden sword, some incense, a servant's uniform, and a command medallion. Finally, there was a bamboo scroll with several small characters written on the cover. Violet Chi Cauldron Control Art. Chi Condensation Manual. It was evening, and Big Fatty Zhang and the others in the ovens were bustling about. Meanwhile, Bai Xiaochun was looking at the bamboo scroll, eyes shining with anticipation. He had come here in order to learn how to live forever, and he held the key to achieving that goal in his hands right now. 
After taking a deep breath, he opened the scroll. Moments later, his eyes were gleaming with excitement. The bamboo scroll had three pictures and accompanying text that described how cultivation was divided into two stages of qi condensation and foundation establishment. As far as the violet qi cauldron control arc, it was divided into ten levels, each of which corresponded to the ten levels of qi condensation. By practicing cultivation to a given level, it was possible to exercise control over physical objects. After reaching the third level, you could control half of a small cauldron. At the sixth level, it became half of a large cauldron. At the ninth level, it was a full cauldron. As for the final full circle, you could actually control two full cauldrons. Unfortunately, this scroll only described up to the third level of the art, with no further information about the subsequent levels. The key to the whole thing was cultivation, using a prescribed set of breathing techniques to develop the violet qi cauldron control art. Bai Xiaochun cleared his mind and began to regulate his breathing. Then he closed his eyes and imitated the posture depicted in the first picture in the bamboo scroll. He was able to hold on for three breaths of time before intense pain filled him. Finally, he let out a shout and gave up. From what he could tell, using this breathing technique actually sucked all the air out of him, making it impossible to actually breathe. This is way too hard, he thought. According to the description under the picture, when you practice this kind of cultivation, you should be able to sense a strand of chi flowing through you. Just now, though, the only thing I felt was intense pain. He was starting to get frustrated. However, for the sake of living forever, he gritted his teeth and tried again. He repeated the process over and over again until it was the middle of the night. During that entire time, he never once sensed any sort of chi in his body. He had no way of knowing it, but even someone with exceptional latent talent who tried to cultivate the first level of the Violet Chi Cauldron Control Art would need at least a month to succeed, unless they had some outside help. Considering that, it was simply impossible that he could have succeeded after only a few hours. Body aching painfully, Bai Xiaochun finally stretched and was about to go wash his face when, all of a sudden, he heard a commotion outside. He stuck his head out of the window and immediately caught sight of a sallow-faced young man standing in the door of the main courtyard of the, the ovens. He looked angry. I'm Su Bao Kai. Whoever it was that took my spot here, get the hell out here right now. 1927 September 1st, 2023 Chapter 3, Six Lines of Truth The motion of Bai Xiaochun sticking his head out of the window instantly attracted the attention of the sallow-faced young man. Enraged, he yelled, so, you're the guy who took my spot. It was too late for Bai Xiaochun to duck his head back into the window. He immediately pasted an innocent expression onto his face and said, no, it wasn't me. Liar. You're so skinny and short, you're obviously a newbie here. Su Baokai clenched his hands into fists and stared furiously at Bai Xiaochun. He was so angry that he looked like he might explode at any moment. Feeling quite wronged, Bai Xiaochun peeped. It really had nothing to do with me. I don't care. Three days from now on the southern slope of the sect, you and I are going to have a fight to the death. If you win, then I'll have no choice other than to suck it up. If you lose, then I get my spot back. Su Baokai shoved his hand into his robe and pulled out a blood notice, which he threw onto Bai Xiaochun's window sill. The notice was covered with countless versions of the character Dai all of them written in blood. Bai Xiaochun looked down at all the Dai characters and couldn't miss the killing intent roiling off of them. His heart went cold. Then he remembered that Su Baokai had just mentioned a fight to the death, and he gasped. Elder brother, this isn't that big a deal. Why did you have to go and use your own blood to write so many characters? Didn't it hurt? Not a big deal? Su Baokai roared, gnashing his teeth. Hump! I've been living frugally for ages. I saved up spirit stones for seven years. Seven years, do you hear me? Only then could I afford to bribe the honor guard into getting me a spot in the ovens. Then you decide to stick your foot into the door? This enmity will never be reconciled. Three days from now is the day you die. I think I'll pass, Bai Xiaochun said, picking up the blood notice gingerly between his thumb and forefinger and then tossing it out the window. You raged Su Bao Kai. Suddenly, he felt the ground shaking, and he realized that there was a mountain of flesh standing there next to him. 
It was hard to say how long Big Fatty Zhang had been standing there, but there he was, off to the side, coldly measuring up Su Bao Kai. Ninth Fatty, he said, addressing Bai Xiaochun, you are on dish duty with second brother. Then he looked back at Su Bao Kai. As for you, stop causing such a ruckus. Get your ass out of here. He swept his ladle through the air threateningly, causing a gust of wind to spring up. Su Bao Tsai's face fell, and he backed up several steps. He wanted to keep arguing, but seeing the impatient look on Big Fatty Zhang's face, he shot a venomous look at Bai Xiaochun, then stalked off. As Bai Xiaochun thought about it, he realized that considering the vicious look Su Bao Kai had given him, he was certain to pop up again at some point. Therefore, the best thing to do in the situation would be to stay put in the ovens. Most likely, Su Bao Kai wouldn't dare to come back there and cause trouble. Days passed. Bai Xiaochun slowly got used to working in the ovens during the day and cultivating the violet chi cauldron control art at night. However, progress was slow. Eventually, he got to the point where he could endure for four breaths of time, but no more, leaving him very frustrated. On one particular night in the middle of his cultivation session, he suddenly heard a big commotion among the fat elder brothers. Close the gate! Close the gate! Hurry up! Second Fatty Huang, close that gate! Third Fatty Hei, check and see if anyone is spying on us. Quickly! Bai Xiaochun blinked in shock. Having learned from his previous mistake, he avoided the window and peeked through a crack in the door. What he saw was a bunch of fatties bustling around the courtyard so fast they were almost flying. Moments later, the main gate to the ovens was closed tightly. Furthermore, for some reason, a faint mist had sprung up, making the fatties look even more mysterious than ever. Bai Xiaochun watched the scene playing out. The fatties were now hustling over to one particular thatched hut. Despite all the mist, Bai Xiaochun could clearly see Big Fatty Zhang's formidable frame, and he seemed to be speaking to the others. The whole scene was very odd, so Bai Xiaochun began to edge away from the door in an attempt to pretend he hadn't seen anything at all. However, it was at that exact point that Big Fatty Zhang's voice echoed out, Ninth Fatty, I know you're watching. Get out here. Although he didn't speak very loud, his voice instantly weighed down on Bai Xiaochun. Bai Xiaochun blinked a few times, then slowly walked out the door, putting on the innocent expression of a person who wasn't capable of even hurting a fly. As soon as he neared the group of fatties, Big Fatty Zhang grabbed him and pulled him over to stand among them. Almost immediately, Bai Xiaochun caught a whiff of some unique aroma, something that instantly caused a warm feeling to spread throughout his body. He looked around at the others and saw that they all had euphoric expressions on their faces. For some reason, he also felt enlivened. It was then that he noticed that Big Fatty Zhang was holding a magical mushroom in his hand. It was about the size of an infant's hand, and as translucent as crystal, all it took was a single glance, and anyone could tell that it was no ordinary item. Big Fatty Zhang looked over at Bai Xiaochun, then held out the mushroom and gruffly said, Come on, ninth junior brother, take a bite. Uh, replied Bai Xiaochun, eyeing the magical mushroom. Then he looked around at all the fat elder brothers and hesitated. Big Fatty Zhang instantly got irritated. From the look on his face, if Bai Xiaochun didn't eat the mushroom, the two of them would become enemies. It wasn't just him. Second Fatty Huang, Third Fatty Hei, and all the others were all glaring at Bai Xiaochun. Bai Xiaochun swallowed hard. Even in his wildest dreams, he would never have imagined himself in a situation where people would flip out in anger if he didn't take a bite of a priceless magical mushroom, as if it were nothing more than a chicken leg. And yet, that was exactly what was happening right in front of his very eyes. Bai Xiaochun's heart was thumping as he gritted his teeth and accepted the magical mushroom. Finally, he opened his mouth and took a big bite. The mushroom instantly dissolved in his mouth, causing a wonderful sensation to fill his body, something many times more intense than what he had experienced moments before when merely smelling it. Almost instantly, his face flushed bright red. Excellent! Elder son demanded that we use this hundred-year-old magical mushroom in a soup. If we all eat, take a bit, then we'll have to sink or swim together. Big Fatty Zhang looked extremely content as he opened his mouth and took a nibble. Then he tossed the mushroom to the next fatty in line, and soon, all of them were munching on mushroom flesh. Now that they were all chewing together, the group smiled at Bai Xiaochun as if he were now one of them. Bai Xiaochun chuckled as he realized that all these guys were essentially partners in crime. Furthermore, considering they had gotten so fat this way, 
it probably wasn't dangerous to join them. It was little wonder Su Baokai had given him a dual challenge with the word Dai written on it so many times. Elder brother, Bai Xiaochun said, that magical mushroom was scrumptious. I feel like my whole body's on fire. He licked his lips and looked impatiently at Big Fatty Zhang. In response, Big Fatty Zhang's eyes began to shine brightly. With a hearty laugh, he flamboyantly pulled out a sealword flower, which he handed to Bai Xiaochun. Now do you see how amazing the ovens is, junior brother? I wasn't lying. All right, eat up. Eat till you're stuffed. Bai Xiaochun's eyes began to shine as he took a big bite. Next, Big Fatty Zhang pulled out some sort of natural precious material, something that looked like a golden jewel, which emanated a fragrant aroma. Bai Xiaochun needed no prompting from Big Fatty Zhang. He immediately took a bite and swallowed it down. The tangy flavor filled him with a wonderful sensation. After that, Big Fatty Zhang produced an incredibly sweet red spirit fruit. More items emerged. Magical mushrooms, various medicinal ingredients, spirit fruits, and other precious items. Bai Xiaochun partook of them all, as did the other fatties. He ate so much that soon, his head was spinning. He almost fell drunk, his body hot and burning to the point where white steam rose up from the top of his head. He already felt as fat as a ball. The more he ate, the more kindly Big Fatty Zhang and the others looked at him. In the end, they slapped their stomachs and laughed heartily, and they all truly seemed like partners in crime. Head swimming, Bai Xiaochun stretched out his arms and legs. His hand landed on Big Fatty Zhang's giant stomach, and his foot landed off to the side. He began to laugh along with the others. Other servant departments would kill to get one of their own into the outer sect. But we kill to make sure we stay out. Who wants to go there anyway? What's so good about the outer sect, huh? Big Fatty Zhang sounded very proud of this. As he finished speaking, he pulled out a ginseng root. The root itself had countless faintly visible age rings and was covered with numerous rootlets. Clearly, this ginseng root was very old. Ninth Junior Brother, our cultivation bases are all strong enough that we could have become outer sect disciples a long time ago. However, we prefer to hide our true level. Look, there are outer sect disciples who would kill for the chance to get a single bite of a 100-year-old ginseng root like this. Do we look scared? Big Fatty Zhang subsequently plucked a root let off and popped it into his mouth, chewed, and swallowed. Then he handed the ginseng root to Bai Xiaochun. Bai Xiaochun was so stuffed he almost couldn't see straight. Elder brother, I'm full. I really can't eat another bite. Before he could even finish speaking, Big Fatty Zhang plucked off a rootlet and stuffed it into his mouth. Ninth Junior Brother, you're far too skinny, so skinny that the girls in the sect won't like you. In our sect, they like guys like us brothers, stalwart and plump. Come on, eat. Big Fatty Zhang let out a huge burp. Then he picked up a stack of empty bowls, simultaneously pointing to two scrolls hanging on either side of the nearby thatched hut, upon which was written a couplet. Look, we have a saying here that goes I'd rather starve to death in the ovens than struggle up the ladder in the outer sect. Bai Xiaochun looked over at the couplet and said, yeah, for sure. We all want to starve to death here. Uh, yeah, starve to death. Then he slapped his stomach and let out a burp. Hearing this, Big Fatty Zhang and the others all started laughing. They all were finding Bai Xiaochun to be increasingly charming. Today is a great day, Big Fatty Zhang said. Ninth Junior Brother, I have something important to tell you. We have certain ways of doing things here in the oven, and to fit in, you need to memorize a certain mnemonic. Pay attention. Fruits and herbs of a magical nature, nibble the edges but spare the stem, slice the meat thin when there's some to butcher, as for the bones leave some flesh on them, spirit kanji. Water it down until it's thin, fine wine. Half a cup will do you in. These six lines were compiled after years of suffering by previous generations. If you go about eating following these principles, then you're guaranteed to be safe. All right, let's call it a night. Head to sleep, everyone. Today's midnight snack is over. The outer sect disciples are still waiting for their soup. As he spoke, Big Fatty Zhang began to fill the empty bowls with rice gruel. Bai Xiaochun's head was spinning, and he couldn't stop thinking about the six lines of truth he had just been told. He looked over at Big Fatty Zhang and the others filling up the bowls, let out a burp, then squatted down to examine the bowls themselves. Then, his mouth turned up into a smile. 
Elder brothers, these bowls are too nice. Big Fatty Zhang and the others looked back at him with strange expressions. Looking as charming as ever, he chuckled and said, at first glance, they don't look very big, but can actually hold a lot of food. Why don't we make them look big, but hold less food? For example, we could make the bottom of the bowls thicker. Big Fatty Zhang stared in shock, as though he had just been struck by lightning. His rolls of fat then began to quiver, and his eyes began to shine brightly. The other fatties began to pant, and their fat also began to tremble. All of a sudden a loud smacking sound rang out as Big Fatty Zhang slapped his thigh. Then he threw his head back and laughed uproariously. Yes, yes, yes. That's an idea worth passing down. Future generations in the ovens will all benefit from this. Ninth Junior Brother, I never imagined that someone as charming as you would actually be as crafty as this. Ha ha ha. You were born to be a part of the ovens. Chapter 4, Spirit Enhancement. Everyone was in a wonderful mood and were extremely pleased with Bai Xiaochun. Not only was he very charming, he seemed to have lots of crafty ideas. Big Fatty Zhang decided that a reward was in order and pressed a grain of spirit rice into Bai Xiaochun's hand. Bai Xiaochun laughed happily as he staggered back to his room. Before he could climb in bed, all of the spiritual energy he had absorbed by eating the various precious materials suddenly burst out inside of him. His head spun, and he flopped face first down onto the ground, where he immediately began snoring. He slept wonderfully for the entire night. The following morning at dawn, when he opened his eyes, they shone brightly. He looked down to find that he was fatter than the day before. Furthermore, his skin was covered in a sticky layer of filth. When he hurried out to wash up, Big Fatty Zhang and the others were preparing breakfast for the sect disciples. When they saw Bai Xiaochun's bedraggled appearance, they started laughing. Ninth Junior Brother, all that filth comes from the impurities in your body. Once you get rid of it, it will be much easier for you to practice cultivation. Take a few days off, we won't need your help anyway. In a few days you can start working again. Don't forget about that grain of spirit rice. Eat it up quickly before it goes bad. Sure thing, Bai Xiaochun replied. Feeling quite energetic, he returned to his room and grabbed the turtle-shaped wok off of the stove. After filling it with water from the washroom, he returned and put it back on the stove. Then he pulled out the grain of spirit rice to examine it. It was about the size of his thumb, crystalline in appearance, and fragrantly aromatic. If immortals eat this stuff, then it must be incredible. Sighing, he threw a few pieces of wood into the stove, then lit the fire. He was immediately hit by a blast of heat, which caused him to back up, blinking anxiously. Then he looked down at the fire and clicked his tongue. That's no ordinary fire. It lights faster and also burns a lot hotter than the fire in the village. Taking another look at the burning logs in the fire, he realized that they were not ordinary pieces of wood. About this time, the fire began to burn even hotter than before, and Bai Xiaochun watched in amazement as one of the designs etched into the back of the turtle shell walk began to light up, starting at what appeared to be the tail of the turtle shell and ending where the head would be. Soon, the entire design was shining brightly. Bai Xiaochun stared in amazement, then slapped his thigh. I knew it. This is some sort of treasure. It's definitely way better than eldest brother's walk. More certain than ever that this walk was something extraordinary, Bai Xiaochun quickly tossed a grain of spirit rice into the water. Then he set off to the side with the Violet Chi Cauldron Control Art Bamboo Scroll. Emulating the movements and breathing techniques depicted in the first picture, he began to cultivate. He had only just begun when, suddenly, his eyes went wide. The posture which had been so difficult to maintain just the day before was now much easier to assume. In fact, he actually felt very comfortable, without the slightest sensation of awkwardness. In addition, the breathing technique no longer left him feeling as if he were suffocating. Instead, he felt a very pleasant sensation. Furthermore, he was absolutely certain that before today he could only maintain the posture for about three or four breaths of time, but this time, after seven or eight breaths, he didn't feel the least bit of pain or discomfort. Suppressing his excitement, Bai Xiaochun calmly continued until thirty breaths of time had passed. Just when he was finally starting to feel weak and uncomfortable, a strand of cheese suddenly appeared inside of him. It was very cold and swirled around rapidly, and before it could make a full circle through his body, it vanished. However, Bai Xiaochun was so excited he leapt to his feet. Chi! Ha ha ha! 
Finally, some chi appeared. Bursting with excitement, he began to pace back and forth in his room. He quickly came to the conclusion that it must have something to do with all the precious materials he had consumed the previous night. Suddenly, he wished he had eaten more. No wonder elder brother Zhang would rather starve to death in the ovens than go climb the ladder in the outer sect. Not even the outer sect disciples would have opportunities like this. Sitting down anxiously, he once again began to practice cultivation. This time, he was able to maintain the posture and breathing for a full 60 breaths of time. At that point, a flow of qi appeared in him, almost a trickle, that rapidly circulated through his body. Having experienced this once before, he was ready and began to guide the qi through a specific path, as indicated by the first picture in the bamboo scroll. Soon, the qi was flowing through him in just the way he wanted. He maintained the posture and movements indicated in the first illustration, and as he did, he could sense streams of coldness emerging from various parts of his body, almost like drops of water, which merged into the chi flow, causing it to grow larger and larger. In the end, it was like a tiny stream, flowing in a continuous cycle. A tremor ran through him, and it was as if a layer of fog had suddenly been stripped away from his mind. A rumbling sound echoed out from his body. He suddenly felt lighter and more agile than before. At the same time, globules of filth were expelled from the pores all over his body. Unlike last time, the stream of chi inside of him didn't vanish, but instead remained there, circulating through his body. Bai Xiaochun opened his eyes, and they shone even more brightly than before. His mind even seemed to move a bit quicker and his body felt lighter and faster. A permanent chi vessel, he thought excitedly. That's the sign that I've successfully cultivated the first level of the violet chi cauldron control art. It also means that I've reached that, what's it called, first level of qi condensation. Bai Xiaochun was overjoyed and immediately ran to the washroom. When Big Fatty Zhang and the others saw him, they exchanged knowing glances. Although they were a bit surprised that Bai Xiaochun had reached the first level so quickly, they all knew why it had happened. After returning to his room, Bai Xiaochun took a deep breath and then began to study the bamboo scroll more thoroughly. After cultivating the first level of the violet chi cauldron control art, I should be able to manipulate physical objects. Wow, this is basically an immortal magical technique. I should be able to shoot things through the air. Eyes shining, he followed the instructions prescribed in the scroll, moving both hands together in a special way to perform an incantation. Then, he waved his finger at the nearby desk. Instantly, the stream inside of him surged like a bucking bronco, racing toward his right index finger and then out through the tip of his finger. It turned into something like an invisible thread, which then attached itself to the nearby desk. However, almost as soon as it reached the desk, the connection grew unstable and the thread disintegrated. Bai Xiaochun's face went pale. After a moment of recuperation, he reviewed what he had just done, then decided to give up on moving the desk. Instead, he pulled out the wooden sword from his bag and placed it on top of the desk. He wasn't sure what type of wood the sword was made from, but despite being much lighter than the desk, it still seemed unusually heavy. He waved his finger toward it, and the wooden sword twitched, then slowly floated an inch up into the air before falling back down onto the desk. Bai Xiaochun was anything but discouraged. After a few more excited attempts, he was able to get the sword to rise higher and higher. Soon it was 10 inches, then 20, then 30. By the time dust fell, he could get the wooden sword to fly in a straight line. Although it wasn't very fast, and he couldn't quite make it turn, it wouldn't fall down as easily as it had when he first started practicing. Henceforth, I, Bai Xiaochun, am an immortal. He rose proudly to his feet, held his left hand behind his back, and then waved his right hand, causing the wooden sword to flying unsteadily back and forth in his room. Eventually, his chi began to grow unstable, so he put the wooden sword away and continued to practice cultivation. Later, he caught wind of a fragrant aroma coming from the walk, causing him to raise his head and take a deep sniff. Suddenly feeling ravenous, he realized that he had been busy cultivating all day and had completely forgotten about the spirit rice boiling in the walk. He immediately walked over and lifted the lid to look inside. The moment he did, the strong, fragrant aroma of spirit rice wafted out. Furthermore, at some point during the process, a brilliant, glowing silver design had appeared on the surface of the rice. The design was clearly visible, and when Bai Xiaochun looked at it closely, he suddenly felt lost within the light. After a while, though, the design began to fade. He narrowed his eyes, and after some more thought, 
picked up the grain of spirit rice and held it in his hand for a closer look. That design looks really familiar. His eyes flickered with a thoughtful gleam. He dipped his head to look under the stove and saw that the fire had long since burned out. The pieces of wood were nothing more than ash now, and the design on the walk had once again faded into obscurity. However, he could still tell that the silver design on the grain of rice was the same design as the one on the back of the walk. He decided not to continue to investigate the design, and to be safe, chose not to eat the rice for the time being. Instead, he put it into his bag, sat there for a moment in contemplation, then left his hut to help Big Fatty Zhang and the rest. Before long, half a month had passed. By Xiaochun's cultivation progress had once again slowed down. However, after some discreet inquiries, he learned that silver designs never appeared on spirit rice when it was cooked. His curiosity had definitely been piqued. The more he learned about it, the more it seemed that there was something special about this particular grain of rice, not to mention his walk, which seemed even stranger. A few days later, Third Fatty Hay left the ovens to go purchase supplies, giving Bai Xiaochun the perfect opportunity to sneak into the Four Seas Room, a place where servants could get general information about cultivation. On his way back to his hut, he did his best to conceal the excitement which filled his heart. After closing the door behind him, he immediately took out the grain of spirit rice and studied the silver design. Gradually, an expression of disbelief appeared on his face. When immortals practice cultivation, there are three skills they can't do without. The first is alchemy, the second is equipment forging, and the third is spirit enhancement. Bai Xiaochun thought back to the images he had dug up when searching through the ancient records in the Four Seas room. One of them had closely resembled the silver design that was now visible on the grain of rice. Spirit Enhancement After a moment, he took a long, deep breath. Spirit Enhancement was a special technique in which the energy of heaven and earth was forced into physical objects. It was a type of magic that essentially replaced the natural functions of heaven and earth, a technique which could be used on medicinal pills, incense, or magical items. Unfortunately, it was forbidden by heaven and earth, ensuring that the rate of success was limited. A success would lead to the item being vastly more powerful. A failure would result in the energy of heaven and earth rendering the item completely useless. The most shocking thing about spirit enhancement was that it could be performed over and over again. Every success increased the effects of the spirit enhancement by tenfold, leading to heaven shaking, earth toppling transformations. Of course, the more precious the item was to begin with, the more terrifying the results of success would be. Unsurprisingly, the chances of success decreased with each enhancement. In fact, after a certain point, even some spirit enhancement grandmasters wouldn't dare to go any further. After all, the ramifications of a failure in that case would be difficult to accept. The ancient record said that the spirit strange sex guardian treasure is an item that was somehow enhanced ten times by spirit enhancement. The Heaven Horn Sword by Xiaochun's throat felt dry. Eyes shining with disbelief and confusion, he swallowed and looked over at the turtle-shaped walk. There were ten faint decorative lines on the back of it, and when he looked at them, his heart began to beat so hard it felt like it was about to burst out of his chest. As of this moment, he was sure that the design which had appeared on the spirit rice was a mark of spirit enhancement. Furthermore, the source of that design was none other than his walk. After a moment of hesitation, he gritted his teeth. If he didn't get to the bottom of this mystery, he wouldn't be able to sleep. He knew for a fact that this walk was something extraordinary, and therefore, he couldn't let anyone in on his secret. He waited until it was late in the night, then very quietly tiptoed over to the walk. After taking a deep breath and trying not to think about what would happen if he failed, he pulled out his wooden sword and threw it inside, the same way he had thrown the grain of rice in. Chapter 5 What Happens If I Lose My Poor Little Life? After waiting for what seemed like forever, nothing unusual happened. Bai Xiaochun looked thoughtfully at the patterns on the turtle walk and then looked down into the stove itself. Nothing remained of the wood but ash so he left to return a few minutes later with some more firewood. Firewood for personal use wasn't very common in the ovens, so he'd been forced to go find Big Fatty Zhang to make a special request for some more. After kindling the fire, Bai Xiaochun once again focused on the first design on the turtle walk. As the wood burned, the design lit up. Bai Xiaochun's heart began to thump with excitement, and then suddenly, the wooden sword began to shine with blinding silver light. He backed up a few paces, after which the light slowly faded away, and a piercing sensation began to emanate out from inside the walk. He took a deep breath and carefully sidled up to the walk. 
The wooden sword, just like the grain of spirit rice, now had a bright silver design on it, which gradually faded to a deep silver color. The sword appeared different than before. Although it was still made of wood, it now seemed more like it was made from metal. Bai Xiaochun's eyes lit up as he carefully took the sword out of the wok. It felt heavier and also emanated a certain coldness. It worked. My first spirit enhancement on the wooden sword worked. Bai Xiaochun fondled the sword ecstatically, then glanced over at the wok and tried to decide what to do with it. In the end, he decided to just leave it where it was. The more he treated it like an ordinary item, the less likely it was that anyone would pay attention to it. As for the spirit rice, he decided to eat it bit by bit over time. He would also be careful to not let anyone see the wooden sword. As an added measure, he came up with the idea of somehow painting over the glowing design. Finally, he tidied his room, then walked out nonchalantly, as if nothing unusual had occurred. Over the next few days, he collected some various liquid materials from the ovens which he used to paint the sword, making it bright and colorful, albeit somewhat unsightly. The most important thing was that the spirit design was covered up well enough that it wasn't obvious. In the end, Bai Xiaochun nodded his head in satisfaction. As the days passed, Bai Xiaochun became as comfortable with life in the ovens as a fish in water. He quickly fit in with the other elder brothers and also became familiar with the work that went on there. He soon found that different types of fire were necessary for cooking different spirit foods. In fact, the different types of fire were described in terms of color. There were one colored flames, two colored flames, and so on. The wood he had used earlier to heat the turtle wok had been one colored firewood. Big Fatty Zhang began to grow especially fond of Bai Xiaochun and took special care of him. Furthermore, just as he'd said, after a few months passed, Bai Xiaochun was starting to gain weight. He was no longer the scrawny kid he had been when he had first joined the section. He was fatter, but at the same time, his skin was also fairer and clearer than before. He also looked more harmless than ever and was clearly reaching the point of being deserving of the title ninth fatty Bai. He also experienced the special snack time arrangement on more than one occasion. However, what Bai Xiaochun found especially frustrating was that, despite gaining weight, his cultivation seemed to progress as slowly as ever. Eventually, he stopped worrying about that and spent most of his time eating and drinking with his elder brothers. Life was good. As the months passed, he heard bits of gossip about recent events in the Spirit Stream sect. In addition, Big Fatty Zhang taught him more about the sect in general. He learned that the sect disciples were divided into the inner and outer sects. Any servant who could practice cultivation all the way to the third level of qi condensation would be able to challenge one of the trials by fire, which were paths that existed on the various mountain peaks in the section a servant who passed the trial by fire could join that mountain peak as an outer sect disciple. Only by becoming an outer sect disciple could anyone truly become a part of the spirit stream sect. However, accomplishing such a feat would count as a stunning accomplishment and would be equivalent to the old saying about the fish leaping over the dragon gate. Only the top three competitors in the monthly trials by fire would be accepted, meaning that the number of people who could become an outer sect disciple was limited. On one particular day, Seventh Fatty had been scheduled to go out and purchase supplies, but ended up being busy with some other matters. As a result, Big Fatty Zhang called for Bai Xiaochun and told him to stand in for Seventh Fatty. Bai Xiaochun hesitated for a moment, recalling the incident with Su Bao Kai from a few months before. Although it probably wasn't anything to worry about, he couldn't shake his anxiety. Before leaving, he went back to his room and collected eight meat cleavers and also donned six long leather coats. By the time he was finished getting dressed, he looked like a round ball. However, he also felt much safer, which was the important thing. The last thing he did was strap his walk onto his back, leaving him feeling very safe. He then staggered out of the ovens and down the mountain. As he walked along the green limestone paths in the sect, he gazed around at the beautiful buildings and courtyards and began to feel prouder than ever. How time flies, he mused, clasping his hands behind his back. Life is like a dream. I, Bai Xiaochun, have only spent a few months practicing cultivation. However, as I think back to the moral world and my life in the village, it fills my eyes with tears. He walked along with eight meat cleavers hanging from his belt, a walk on his back, and multiple layers of clothing, looking very much like a dilapidated toy ball. Occasionally, he would encounter other servants who would stare at him out of the corners of their eyes as he passed. 
There were even a few female disciples who couldn't help but laugh out loud when they saw him. They covered their mouths with their hands, and the sound of their laughter was like silver bells, clear and melodious. Face slightly flushed, Bai Xiaocheng couldn't help but feel even more impressive than ever. Clearing his throat, he stuck his chest out and continued to saunter along. Before too much time had passed, and before he had even left the Third Peak Servants District, he noticed that quite a few servants were rushing off into the distance, looking very excited. They appeared to be heading in the direction of the path that led up to the top of the Third Peak, a place where outer sect disciples often congregated. More and more servants began running over in that direction, looking very excited. Surprised by the scene, Bai Xiaochen quickly grabbed a scrawny servant who happened to be running by. Junior brother, what's going on? Bai Xiaochen asked quizzically. Why is everyone running over there? The young man looked over angrily, but then saw the black walk on Bai Xiaochun's back, and his expression turned envious. I didn't realize you were from the ovens, elder brother. Why don't you come along? Two chosen from the outer sect, Zhou Hong and Zhang Ida, are fighting it out in the trial by fire arena. Supposedly, the two of them have a beef with each other. Whatever happens, they're both at the sixth level of qi condensation, so we should be able to learn a bit by watching them, and maybe even gain some enlightenment. Finishing his explanation, the young man hurried off, apparently worried about missing out on any of the action. Feeling very curious, Bai Xiaochun set off in a hurry, following the flow of people as they left the servant's district and headed to the foot of the third peak, where a large raised platform could be seen. The platform was about 3,000 meters wide and was surrounded by a crowd of servants. There were even people watching from positions further up on the mountain, all of whom wore resplendent clothing and were clearly outer sect disciples. Two young men occupied the platform, both of whom wore extravagant outfits. One of them had a scar running down his face, the other had skin as white as jade. The two of them were fighting back and forth, causing booming sounds to echo out. The glow of magical items surrounded both of them. Floating in front of the scar-faced youth was a small flag that fluttered of its own volition, as if some invisible hand were waving it. The swirling flag formed the shape of a mist tiger, which let out deafening roars. The jade-faced youth danced back and forth as he fought. He had a small blue sword which whistled through the air, leaving behind streaks of light. When Bai Xiaochun saw the sword flying about, he gasped. Although he could control his own wooden sword in a similar way, it would be impossible to even compare his level of skill with that of the jade-faced young man. What was even more remarkable was how the two young men didn't seem to be holding anything back. Killing intent roiled off of them, and within a short time, numerous deadly situations arose. Both were heavily wounded, and despite the fact that the wounds weren't critical, it was still a shocking sight. This was by Xiaochun's first time seeing cultivators fighting, and it was very different from how he had imagined immortals would look when they fought. The cruel and vicious way they attacked each other left his heart pounding in fear. Immortal cultivation isn't just about living forever. What's all this fighting and killing all about? What happens if I end up losing my poor little life? Bai Xiaochun swallowed nervously as he watched the scar-faced youth Miss Tiger lunging voraciously at the other young man. Wiping the sweat from his brow, Bai Xiaochun suddenly realized that the outside world was a very dangerous place. It was probably a much better idea to stay back in the ovens where it was safe. Having reached this conclusion, he began to hurry off when, all of a sudden, he heard someone shouting his name. Bai Xiaochun. He turned his head and saw the author of the blood notice, Su Bao Kai, hurrying in his direction, a vicious expression on his face. A wooden sword floated next to him, glittering with an unusual light that clearly surpassed the first level of qi condensation. As the sword flew along, it left a streak of light in its wake and sent a formidable spirit pressure emanating out. When Bai Xiaochun saw that wooden sword heading in his direction, his eyes went wide and an intense sense of deadly crisis welled up in him. He's gonna kill me, he thought. Instantly, he began to run in the opposite direction, screaming, Murder! Murder! The other servants in the area all heard and looked over in shock. The cries were so loud that even Zhou Hong and Zhang Ida stopped fighting. In fact, even Su Baokai was unnerved by the screams. He had obviously just yelled by Xiaochun's name and then started to chase him. His sword hadn't even touched by Xiaochun, and yet by Xiaochun was screaming as though he had been stabbed repeatedly. Su Baokai hated Bai Xiaochun so much his gums itched. Face ashen, he ran after him, shouting, Come on, Bai Xiaochun, you know how to fight. What are you running away for? If I knew how to fight, 
Why would I be running away, you moron? I would have killed you a long time ago. Murder. Murder. By Xiaochen's screams grew even louder as he fled in the opposite direction like a fat little bunny. Meanwhile, in a building which jetted out into the air at the very peak of the mountain, two men were in the middle of playing a game of Go. One was middle-aged, the other was an old man. The middle-aged man was none other than Li Qingho. As for the old man, he had a full head of white hair and a ruddy complexion. His eyes glittered brightly, and he was clearly no ordinary individual. Currently, he was looking down at the scene playing out down below. Chuckling, he said, what an interesting child you brought back to the sect, Ching Ho. How embarrassing, sect leader. The kid's personality definitely needs a lot more work. Feeling a headache coming on, Li Ching Ho placed his game piece onto the board and then shook his head. The kids in the ovens are pretty stuck up, and yet this kid fits right in, scoffed the old man, stroking his beard. Not an easy task. Hmm. Quick note about the meat cleavers. In Chinese, the word is literally vegetable knife and could more properly be translated as kitchen knife. However, the most common kitchen knife that you find in most Chinese households is what we would call a cleaver in English. However, in both home kitchens and restaurant kitchens in China, cleavers are used for everything from cutting big chunks of meat to julienning vegetables. Chapter 6, Drunk on Spiritual Energy the sound of Bai Xiaochun's screams undulated through the air beneath the third peak, catching the astonished attention of numerous servants. All of them could clearly see Bai Xiaochun, black walk on his back, wearing several layers of clothing, running at breakneck speed through the servants' district. He looked like a fat, round ball. From a distance, it was difficult to actually make out Bai Xiaochun himself, but you would definitely see the black walk, which made him look almost like a beetle as he flew along. Then there were the eight meat cleavers that hung from his belt, which clashed and clanked as he fled. Murder, he hollered as he ran, picking up speed. Someone save me. I don't want to die. Su Baokai was hot on his tail, face ashen, eyes gleaming ferociously and heart filled with both anxiety and rage. Chasing by Xiaochun this way was catching quite a bit of attention from the servants, and Su Baokai was worried that the honor guard might notice. The nervousness in his heart continued to grow. Quit screeching, damn it. Su Baokai raged. Quiet down. What are you screaming for? Shut up. Gritting his teeth, he performed a double-handed incantation gesture, causing the wooden sword to flicker with light and then shoot toward the fleeing Bai Xiaochun. A clang rang out as the wooden sword slammed into Bai Xiaochun's black walk. As the noise echoed out, Bai Xiaochun continued running as if nothing had happened. Su Baokai gnashed his teeth. The big walk on by Xiaochun's back covered nearly half of his body, making it very difficult to hit him. However, feeling that he had little other choice, Su Baokai continued to give chase. And so they raced through the servant's district, by Xiaochun leading the way, Su Baokai running behind him. This guy is pretty fast, even with that walk on his back, thought Su Baokai, huffing and puffing as he fell further behind in the chase. His cultivation base was at the second level of qi condensation, and he was running as hard as he could. However, Bai Xiaochun was running with the passion of a rabbit whose tail had been stepped on. No matter what Su Baokai did, he couldn't catch up. More horrifying was that he was starting to get tired and yet hadn't even laid a finger on his opponent. In contrast, Bai Xiaochun didn't seem to be the least bit tired at all and was also screaming like a pig at the slaughterhouse. Soon, Bai Xiaochun caught sight of the little path leading to the ovens and his eyes glittered with excitement. He suddenly felt as though he were arriving home, and the sensation was so moving that he almost cried. Elder brother, save me, he cried. He's trying to murder me. A trail of dust rose into the air behind him as he ran toward the ovens at breakneck speed. Big Fatty Zhang and the others heard his screaming and hurried out, shocked expressions on their faces. Elder brother, save me. Su Baokai is trying to kill me. My poor little life is on the line. Bai Xiaochun quickly scrambled behind Big Fatty Zhang. Big Fatty Zhang's eyes gleamed with a ferocious light as he looked around vigilantly, but he saw no one. Su Baokai, he asked. It was at this point that Su Baokai finally appeared, huffing and puffing as he ran down the path toward the ovens. When Bai Xiaochun realized how far behind Su Baokai was, a quizzical expression appeared on his face. E? Why is he running so slow? Big Fatty Zhang looked at Bai Xiaochun and then back at the panting Su Baokai. 
The motion caused the fat on his face to quiver a bit. Su Baokai had expended a lot of effort in the chase, so as he neared the ovens and then heard what Bai Xiaochun said, he was filled with so much rage that he felt like he was about to explode. With a roar, he waved his right hand, sending his wooden sword stabbing toward a nearby tree. A bang could be heard, and the tree quivered as the sword pierced through it, leaving behind a gaping hole. By Xiaochun, he cried, our differences are irreconcilable. His eyes were completely bloodshot as he glared at Bai Xiaochun and then the hulking big fatty Zhang. Finally, he turned angrily and began to stalk off back down the path. Bai Xiaochun's heart was pounding as he looked at the hole in the tree. Then he looked back at the fuming Su Bao Kai and swallowed hard as an uneasy feeling rose up in his heart. Big fatty Zhang looked at Su Bao Tsai's retreating figure and his eyes flickered with a sinister gleam. Then he patted Bai Xiaochun on the shoulder. Don't worry, ninth junior brother. Su Baokai might have some good connections in the sect, but if he dares show his face here again, we elder brothers will cut off one of his legs. Almost as soon as the words left his mouth, though, his tone changed. Although, it would probably be best if you didn't leave the ovens, ninth junior brother. You're looking a bit skinny. I think I should fatten you up a bit. After all, Elder Zhou is celebrating his decade birthday in a few days. Bai Xiaochun nodded his head absentmindedly as he stared at the whole soup outside's wooden sword had left in the tree. He then followed his elder brothers back into the ovens. Later, he sat in his room, brooding and feeling more uneasy than ever. The fact that his opponent could send a wooden sword through a tree meant that if it had hit him, he would definitely be a corpse now. This isn't gonna work, not unless I plan on staying inside the ovens for the rest of my life. What if he catches me next time I go out? Bai Xiaochun just couldn't stop thinking about the venomous look Su Baokai had cast his way before leaving. I came here to live forever, not to die. The feeling of insecurity and anxiety caused Bai Xiaochun's eyes to slowly become shot with blood. After a long moment passed, he gritted his teeth. Fudge. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go all out. I'm gonna go so all out that I'll terrify myself, let alone everyone else. His eyes were now completely bloodshot. Instead of saying that Bai Xiaochun was the type of person who was afraid of dying, it would be more accurate to say that he was simply insecure. The ordeal he had just gone through had only served to stoke his determination. I'm going to practice cultivation. I'm going to get stronger. Bai Xiaochun's breath came in ragged pants as he made his decision. He pulled out the Violet Chi Cauldron Control Art Bamboo Scroll, opened it up to the second illustration, and then immediately began to practice cultivation. He might be afraid of dying, but he was also viciously persistent. Were he not, he would never have been able to light that stick of incense 13 times throughout the years, despite the threat of the lightning. Grinning with vicious determination, he assumed the posture in the second illustration, tenaciously maintaining the pose. Before, he had only been able to last for about 10 breaths of time, but this time, he actually lasted for 15. He ended up racked with pain, forehead dripping with great drops of sweat. However, the vicious gleam in his eye didn't fade. Soon, he was able to last for 20 breaths of time, then 30. The small stream that was the chi vessel in his body was now 10% complete. Gasping for breath, vision fading to black, he finally rested for a moment, then started cultivating again. The night passed relatively uneventfully. Soon it was the next day. And the day after that. And yet another day. Eventually 15 days went by. Other than eating and visiting the restroom, Bai Xiaochun never left his room. To someone who had just begun the practice of cultivation, such tediousness was usually difficult to endure. However, Bai Xiaochun didn't even come close to giving up. Big Fatty Zhang and the others were shocked by his relentless practice of cultivation. It must be stated that cultivating the Violet Chi Cauldron Control Art was no easy task. In principle, it was relatively simple. However, the postures that had to be maintained to reach the various levels all led to unimaginable pain and therefore required incredible perseverance. Normally speaking, the servants in the sect would give up after only a few days of trying to cultivate it. Therefore, when Big Fatty Zhang and the others saw Bai Xiaochun continue to cultivate it for more than half a month, they felt like they were observing an entirely different person than the one they had met a few months ago. His clothes grew wrinkled, his hair became disheveled, his eyes were completely bloodshot. He seemed completely bedraggled, and at the same time, completely focused. Regardless of the pain he felt, he never gave up. 
Another thing that happened was that he began to lose some of the fat he had built up. At the same time, the spirit pressure he radiated increased by more than 50%. He was now very close to the great circle of the first level of chi condensation. Apparently, all of the precious materials he had eaten had built up in his fat. By practicing cultivation in the way he was, it was forcing those items to materialize as part of his cultivation base. It also ended up making his body tougher than the average person. Ninth Junior Brother, why don't you take a break? You've been practicing cultivation nonstop for more than half a month. Big Fatty Zhang and the others tried to persuade him to stop. However, when he looked up at them, they saw a gleam of determination in his eyes that left them shaken. Time passed. Soon, Bai Xiaochun had been practicing cultivation like mad for a full month. Big Fatty Zhang and the others were shocked. In fact, Big Fatty Zhang even said, he's not cultivating, he's killing himself. By this point in his cultivation, Bai Xiaochun could hold the pose in the second illustration for longer than 100 breaths of time. Soon, he reached 150 breaths of time. The spiritual energy inside of him was not a small stream anymore. It was far, far larger than that. Another month passed. Big Fatty Zhang and the others trembled in fear, worried that Bai Xiaochun really was killing himself from working too hard. Even as they were working up a plan to go get rid of Su Bao Kai, a huge rumbling could be heard coming from Bai Xiaochun's hut. As the sound echoed about, the spirit pressure of the second level of qi condensation erupted out from the hut, spreading for dozens of meters in all directions. As soon as Big Fatty Zhang and the others sensed it, they looked up with expressions of shock. Little Junior Brother has broken through. The second level of qi condensation. He hasn't even partaken of the oven snack arrangement for more than half a year, and he's already reached the second level of qi condensation. That's pretty rare. It took me a whole year to reach the second level of qi condensation. Even as they were making exclamations of shock, a crash could be heard as Bai Xiaochun's door opened, and he burst out, looking exhausted and disheveled. However, his eyes were glittering brightly. Big Fatty Zhang and the others were just about to hurry over to offer congratulations when Bai Xiaochun flashed through the air and nimbly landed on the bamboo fence that surrounded the ovens. He clasped his hands behind his back and tilted his head up proudly, looking off into the distance with a profound gleam in his eyes. He looked every bit like a proud, lonesome hero. Big Fatty Zhang and the others exchanged dismayed glances. What is he standing there for? He looks so weird. Did little junior brother get possessed or something? Almost as soon as they looked over at Bai Xiaochun and his odd appearance, they heard his voice echoing out, sounding proud and wise. Su Baokai is a consummate chosen among the servants of the spirit stream sect, matchlessly vicious and famous far and wide. His cultivation base is even in the terrifying second level of qi condensation. However, my cultivation base is also in the second level of qi condensation. A fight between us will be an even match. It will likely be a fight talked about in all the lands, a battle that will shake the entire section. However, it must be fought, no matter how much blood and gore flows, no matter how many bones are shattered and tendons, wait a second. No, this battle is far, far too important. I have to keep practicing cultivation. Having finished speaking, Bai Xiaochun looked around for a moment, then flicked his sleeve and returned to his room. The door slammed shut behind him as he began another session of secluded meditation. Big Fatty Zhang and the others swallowed hard and exchanged glances. Finally, Third Fatty Hei said, Don't tell me we gave Junior Brother some spoiled food. Second Fatty Huang shivered and replied, Oh no. This is bad. Junior Brother is drunk on spiritual energy. He's gone crazy from cultivation. We mustn't provoke him now. Chapter 7, Bonding the Turtle Walk In the following days, Big Fatty Zhang and the others kept a constant eye out on Bai Xiaochun's thatched hut. As for Bai Xiaochun, breaking through to the second level of qi condensation gave him quite a boost in self-confidence, and he continued to focus on cultivation. Currently, he was in his room, wiping the sweat from his brow. He was bug naked, gritting his teeth against the pain as he tried to maintain the posture of the third image in the bamboo scroll. His chi vessel was no longer a flowing stream, but rather, a small river. It flowed through his body, and with every rotation, cracking sounds would emanate out from inside of him. 
His previously rotund body was now thin once again, and in fact, he was even thinner than when he had first arrived in the ovens. However, there seemed to be energy building up in his body. As he continued to practice cultivation, the flesh and muscle that covered his skinny frame pulsed with power. In fact, if you listened carefully, you would even be able to hear the sound of his heartbeat echoing about in his room. More and more spirit pressure was condensing inside of him, filling by Xiaochun with a feeling of increasing power. After several more days passed, the pain increased to a point where it was simply too much, and he had to give up. He was left panting, eyes completely bloodshot. He had the strong feeling that he simply couldn't continue on this way. Although he naturally absorbed the spiritual power of heaven and earth while cultivating, that flow simply couldn't keep up with how much power he was wasting. Furthermore, the oven snack arrangement wasn't a regular occurrence and only happened on lucky occasions. Most other people cultivated the violet chi cauldron control art by practicing it once every few days. Even people who were more devoted would only practice it once per day. In contrast, Bai Xiaochun had been practicing nonstop. It was no small wonder that Big Fatty Zhang and the others were shocked. In fact, many intersect disciples would have been astonished to hear about what he was doing. However, having reached this level of cultivation still left Bai Xiaochun feeling insecure and uneasy. After all, he was the type of person who would rather be safe than sorry. Finally, he pulled out the grain of spirit rice that he had enhanced and looked at it for a long moment before using an ordinary wok to cook it up. After the spiritual energy began to waft out of it, he quickly gobbled it down. As soon as the spirit rice entered his mouth, it turned into a thick blast of spiritual energy that was exponentially more powerful than ordinary spirit rice. In fact, the two types couldn't even be considered to be on the same level. As the rumbling sounds echoed out inside of him, he began to practice cultivation. He instantly assumed the posture in the third illustration, and at the same time, began to regulate his breathing. Half a month later, deep in the night, a tremor ran through by Xiaochun, and he opened his eyes. He suddenly realized that at some indeterminable point, he had actually broken through from the second level of qi condensation to the third level. This development caused him to go wild with joy. Excitement filled his eyes, and he began to laugh uproariously. Examining himself, he realized that the qi vessel inside of him had thoroughly transformed into a small river. The small river circulated through his body at high speed, moving far, far faster than it had before. In fact, he could even send the spiritual energy around to different parts of his body, all with a simple thought. The third level of qi condensation. That spirit enhancement was incredible. He rose to his feet, licking his lips at the thought of producing another spirit-enhanced grain of spirit rice. However, it was at this point that he remembered something the bamboo scroll had mentioned about the growth of internal meridians. Right now, he needed to let his body adapt to the expanded meridians and temporarily couldn't continue to practice cultivation. Putting his idea about the spirit rice on the back burner, he walked out of his room, all the while looking extremely proud of himself. However, almost as soon as he set foot out the door, he caught sight of the little path outside of the ovens and the tree with the hole in it. Although it was late at night, the tree was clearly visible in the moonlight. This won't do. Su Baozai's wooden sword is obviously beyond ordinary. Even being in the third level of qi condensation won't guarantee my safety. Frowning, he stood there and thought for a moment before taking out his own multicolored wooden sword. Then he looked back at the walk inside his room. I think I'll feel a bit more confident if I do a second spirit enhancement, he thought. Without any further hesitation, he retrieved some of the oven's spirit wood. After getting fully prepared, he stood in front of his mysterious wok and kindled the fire. Once the design on the wok lit up, he tossed the wooden sword inside. However, after waiting for quite some time, there didn't seem to be any reaction. Bai Xiaochun frowned and looked at the design on the turtle wok, then glanced down and realized that the fire had already burned out. Nothing but ash remained of the wood. Muttering to himself, he went out to find some more spirit wood. However, after burning several more batches, he didn't see any difference in the wooden sword. These pieces of firewood are all for one colored flames, he thought. Maybe that's just not hot enough. Maybe I need the heat of a two colored flame? He left his room again and found a piece of violet colored firewood, which was relatively rare in the ovens. In fact, after searching for a while, he could only find a single piece. After kindling it, the flame appeared, a two-colored flame that was far hotter than a one-colored flame. 
Almost as soon as the two-colored flame touched the surface of the turtle walk, the second design began to shine brightly. As for the flame itself, it rapidly began to fade away. Apparently, the power of the flame was being sucked away. Soon, the two-colored flame had burned out, leaving behind nothing but ash. However, the turtle walk's second design was now shining brightly. It worked, he thought, eyes shining. He quickly put the wooden sword back inside, whereupon silver light began to shimmer. This time, it lasted for several breaths of time longer than the first time he had done the spirit enhancement. The light began to dim, but then, it suddenly flared up and shot directly toward by Xiao Chun. This sudden change occurred so quickly that he couldn't even react. His vision swam with light as an indescribably cold sensation washed through him. It almost felt as if he were being frozen over. There was nothing he could do to stop it from happening. It felt as if the coldness was viciously grabbing at his insides. His face went pale, and his vision blurred. It was as if something inside of him was being sucked out and merged into the turtle walk. Finally, the silver light faded away, and within the walk, the wooden sword appeared, sharper than ever. In fact, it was so sharp that looking at it hurt the eyes. Although it was still painted gaudily, the veins of the wood inside had already changed. If you scraped away the paint, you would find that they seemed to be filled with starlight, as if the sword had been thoroughly and completely transformed. In virtually the same moment as the new wooden sword appeared, thunder crackled in the air above the south bank of the spirit stream sect. It was almost as if the heavens were rumbling in rage, causing shock to rise up in the hearts of countless cultivators in the spirit stream sect. However, almost as soon as the thunder crackled out, it was gone. As the thunder was booming, a second silver design appeared on the wooden sword. After flickering for a moment, the design faded away into the gaudy paint. Bai Xiaochun, however, couldn't even look at the sword. He staggered backward, a grim look on his face. After a long moment passed, he recovered his composure, although fear still lingered in his heart. What did it suck out of me, he thought, nervously looking at his reflection in the copper mirror on the wall. After examining himself closely for a moment, he rubbed his eyes, then gaped at his reflection, looking as shocked as a wooden chicken. There in the mirror, he could see that at the very top of his forehead was a white hair. Although his face didn't look any different, he couldn't shake the feeling that the white hair made him look at least a year older. My lifespan, he murmured, aghast. Just now, my lifespan was reduced. My, my, he wanted to cry, but no tears would come. His whole purpose in learning about cultivation was to live forever. Now, instead of reaching the goal of living forever, he had actually lost one year off his lifespan, which was a huge blow. Screwed. How could I ever have imagined that I, Bai Xiaochun, would be so careful in life only to end up screwing myself like this? He sat there in a daze for a while before finally chuckling bitterly. After calming himself down, he looked back at the turtle walk, whereupon a strange gleam gradually rose in his eyes. For some reason, after having some of his longevity sucked away, it now felt like there was some sort of connection between him and the walk, as if he could actually control it now. Heart thumping, he extended his hand and pointed a finger at it. The turtle walk immediately flickered, shrank down, and flew toward by Xiaochun. In the blink of an eye, it disappeared into the tip of his finger. Eyes wide with shock, Bai Xiaochun leapt to his feet and backed up a few steps. He looked down at his finger and then back at the empty stove. This, this. He pointed his finger down at the ground and a black gleam of light flashed and a clanking sound rang out as the walk appeared once more. After experimenting a few more times, his expression flickered from grim to delighted to mournful. Finally, he sighed. Well, I can suck this thing into my body, but the price I had to pay was a year of longevity. How come it still seems like I screwed myself? The next day at noon, Bai Xiaochun was trying to figure out a way to get back the longevity which had been sucked away from him. He was in the middle of doing some research when, all of a sudden, he looked up. He had just sensed that there were eight people heading toward the entrance of the ovens. That was something he would never have been able to detect when only in the first level of qi condensation. However, now that he was in the third level, he could instantly sense that one of the eight people was none other than Su Bao Kai. Almost at the same time, Su Bao Tsai's voice suddenly rang out, filled with fury and hatred. Bai Xiaochun, you have elder brothers to protect you, but so do I. Today, the enmity between the two of is going to end permanently. Chapter 8, We're Gonna Go All Out As soon as he realized that Su Bao Kai was coming, Bai Xiaochun shot to his feet. Well, he came sooner than expected, he thought, 
his eyes flickering with hesitation. Although he had done everything he could to prepare in the last half year or so, he still didn't feel ready. As far as he was concerned, the best option would have been to go into the conflict in the fourth level of chi condensation. Only then would he have felt safe. Seeing that Su Baokai had come with a group of seven others, Bai Xiaochun knew that hiding wasn't an option. Gritting his teeth, he said, fine. I'm going to go for it. Taking a deep breath, he quickly donned eight leather coats and then attached his backup walk to his back. Only then did he nervously open his door and step out. The first thing he saw was Big Fatty Zhang and the others out by the front gate, hefting meat cleavers and huge kitchen ladles as they blocked the path of Su Baokai and his friends. I was wondering why I heard the crows squawking this morning, Big Fatty Zhang roared, his voice echoing like thunder as he stood there, tall and mountain-like. As it turns out, a bunch of brats from the supervisor's department decided to come cause a scene here in the ovens. Other people might be scared of the ovens, Big Fatty Zhang, but the supervisor's department doesn't give a crap about you. We received a complaint from Junior Brother Sue, and we're here with the authority of the supervisor's department. Do you really dare to resist us? Seven arrogant-looking men clustered around Su Baokai. Although they wore servant uniforms, their sleeves were conspicuously embroidered with the character supervisor, indicating that they were from the supervisor's department and had a status and power beyond ordinary servants. One of the men was a burly fellow who looked as tough as a tiger and as sturdy as a bear. He emanated the spirit pressure of the third level of qi condensation, and his eyes glittered coldly as he stared at Big Fatty Zhang. Apparently, he didn't seem phased at all by Big Fatty Zhang and the others. Hogwash, replied Big Fatty Zhang. He was trying to kill my junior brother. How do you explain that? He then laughed coldly as his hand whistled through the air, causing the big black walk on his back to suddenly fly up into the air, looking completely majestic. The burly man's cohorts looked on with flickering expressions, and as for the burly man himself, his eyes widened. Then his hand flashed in an incantation gesture, causing a small flag to fly out. Mist poured out of the flag, from within which the roaring of a wild beast could be heard. Even as the figurative swords were being drawn, Su Baokai saw Bai Xiaochun stepping out of his thatched hut, and all his previous rancor and hatred erupted inside of him. Bai Xiaochun, he roared. As soon as the words left Su Baokai's mouth, he waved his hand, sending his wooden sword flying out. Looks of shock could be seen on the faces of Big Fatty Zhang and the others. Just as they were about to leap to stop the wooden sword, the burly man from the supervisor's department laughed coldly and blocked their path. However, it was in that same instant that Bai Xiaochun, eyes bloodshot, roared, Su Baokai, you've pushed things too far. You and I are going to go all out. Bai Xiaochun's heart was pounding. He had never actually been in a fight in his entire life, much less magical combat against another cultivator. He was so nervous that he was shaking. Roaring to build his own courage, he unleashed the power of the third level of qi condensation, holding nothing back from his cultivation base. He poured all of his spiritual energy into his wooden sword, then waved his finger to send it flying towards Su Baokai. As the wooden sword whistled through the air, the two designs hidden by the garish paint flickered slightly. Suddenly, the sword expanded in size and exploded with an oppressive coldness as it bore down on Su Baokai. The speed and majesty with which it shot through the air caused Big Fatty Zhang, as well as the group from the supervisor's department, to gasp and stare in astonishment. As the ferocious aura of the sword filled the area, all hearts were struck with shock, and suddenly, nobody was interested in fighting anymore, and instead stared at the sword. Su Baokai hadn't even gotten close to Bai Xiaochun yet, and was struck with terror by his energy. From what he could tell, this version of Bai Xiaochun was completely different than the person he had faced several months before. The way he gritted his teeth and looked like he was going all out caused Su Baotsai's heart to fill with shock. Next, his eyes widened with disbelief as he saw Bai Xiaochun's wooden sword speeding toward him. It was like a stream of white light, bursting with the type of energy that he had only seen during fights between outer sect disciples. He was so flabbergasted that his scalp went numb. A bang rang out as Bai Xiaochun's wooden sword slammed into Su Baotsai's. Su Baotsai's wooden sword trembled, completely incapable of standing up to the force of the blow. Starting from the tip, it shattered into pieces. In the blink of an eye, it was completely destroyed, transformed into countless shimmering fragments. As for Bai Xiaochun's wooden sword, it didn't even pause. It continued to shoot through the air toward Su Baokai, who by this point was scared witless. 
Using all the power he could muster, he dodged out of the way. The wooden sword whistled past him, slicing his shoulder in the process, and then slashing into a nearby tree. A boom rattled out as the tree was chopped completely in half, and then collapsed onto the ground, sending a cloud of dust into the air. Subaokai let out a miserable shriek as blood splashed all over his arm. Face pale, he immediately fell back. Luckily for him, Bai Xiaochun wasn't very adept at controlling physical objects. Otherwise, that sword would definitely have killed him. Third level of chi condensation. Impossible. This is impossible. Su Baokai looked at Bai Xiaochun, and he seemed as terrified as if he had just caught sight of a ghost. To be able to unleash such power in a wooden sword clearly required the third level of chi condensation, and he simply could not imagine how Bai Xiaochun could have made such an astonishing transformation in only a few months. Things were playing out in exactly the opposite as he had imagined they would, which was impossible for him to accept. It was like he was in a living nightmare. He wasn't the only shocked one. The burly man from the supervisor's department and all of his friends all gasped and looked over at Bai Xiaochun with serious expressions, forming sharpness with spiritual energy and unleashing sword light. That's only possible by cultivating the violet chi cauldron control art into the lightness and heaviness realm. There's no other way to unleash a divine ability like that. The burly man from the supervisor's department gasped, and fear could now be seen in his eyes as he looked at Bai Xiaochun. His fellows had the exact same reaction, and there was almost no need to even mention Big Fatty Zhang and the others, who were also completely shocked. Although they had sensed that Bai Xiaochun had reached the third level of qi condensation, the fact that the could cause sword light to emanate out from the wooden sword and also make it grow larger showed that he really had reached the lightness and heaviness realm, something they had been completely unaware of before. Even Bai Xiaochun was a bit shaken by what had just happened with the wooden sword. He stared at the toppled tree, then at the ashen-faced Su Baokai, and suddenly threw his head back and laughed. So, Su Baokai, it turns out you are the weak one. Eat my sword. Delighted that he was clearly stronger than Su Baokai, Bai Xiaochun immediately began chasing Su Baokai, laughing the entire time. Bai Xiaochun's gaze caused Su Baokai to tremble, and the sight of him rushing over, laughing uproariously, was completely terrifying. Su Baokai immediately scrambled to flee. However, he could only take a few steps before Bai Xiaochun was upon him. As he closed in, Bai Xiaochun couldn't help but think of how Su Baokai had chased him relentlessly, forcing him to spend so many bitter days practicing cultivation. That bitterness turned into power, which he now used to kick viciously at Su Baokai. Let's see you try to kill me again, he yelled, punching Su Baokai in the eye. Su Baokai let out a miserable shriek and fell to the ground. He wanted to fight back but his cultivation base was only at the second level of qi condensation, leaving him powerless to do anything to Bai Xiaochun. You provoked the young master, so now he's going to show you that he's not to be trifled with. Fuming with rage, Bai Xiaochun continued to kick and punch Su Baokai, who was now wailing in anguish. Cracking sounds could be heard that caused both the burly man and the others from the supervisor's department, as well as Big Fatty Zhang and the others, to all stare in shock. They watched Su Baokai being beaten, and Bai Xiaochun excitedly doing the beating, and their hearts prickled with fear. Tears streamed down Su Baotsai's face, and his heart overflowed with grief. He still couldn't believe that Bai Xiaochun had experienced such a drastic transformation in just a few short months. Even more unbelievable was that he could use the divine ability of lightness and heaviness. That was something that was impossible to achieve without years of work and significant skill. In his mind, Bai Xiaochun obviously must have someone powerful helping him. Furthermore, he was surely more powerful than he had let on before. However, because of his despicable and shameless personality, he had pretended to be weak. Most outrageous was that Su Baokai had completely fallen for the act. At that point, Su Baokai was overwhelmed with sorrow and simply passed out. Seeing that Su Baokai had fallen unconscious, Bai Xiaochun patted the dust off of his clothes and then waved his hand, causing his wooden sword to fly over into his sleeve. Then, looking every bit the lonely hero, he did his best to hide the excitement in his eyes. The burly man from the supervisor's department looked deeply at him, his expression conflicted. Finally, he clasped hands and bowed. Junior brother Bai, you did a good job of concealing your true strength, he said, his face expressionless. You've earned our admiration. Then, he turned and left with his fellows, picking up the unconscious Su Baokai and taking him along too. 
After they left, Big Fatty Zhang and the others clustered around by Xiaochun, smiling broadly. After all, the people from the supervisor's department were outsiders, and they knew that Bai Xiaochun had worked hard over the past months. Therefore, they were pleased with the overall outcome. Nice work, kid. You didn't kill yourself for half a year for nothing. Big Fatty Zhang patted Bai Xiaochun's shoulder. That's right. I worked so hard that I scared even myself. Bai Xiaochun lifted his chin as proudly as a cocky rooster, as if daring Big Fatty Zhang and the others to ever laugh at him again. Chapter 9, Age Prolonging Longevity Enhancing Pill According to an ancient saying, time flying by is like catching a glimpse of a white colt flashing past a chink in a wall. That is exactly what happened for Bai Xiaochun. A month later, cold winds blew down the Heavenspan River and through the Spirit Strange sect. All of a sudden, Bai Xiaochun realized that he had been in the sect for a year already. The past year had been chock full of one event after another. He had left the world of mortals to become a cultivator, elevated his cultivation base to the third level of qi condensation, and had resolved all the conflicts that cropped up due to him joining the ovens. Su Baokai never showed up at the ovens again, and when Bai Xiaochun left on supply runs and saw him from a distance, he would scurry away, clearly terrified. Despite all of that, However, after a month went by, Bai Xiaochun looked as anxious as ever and was sighing constantly. He didn't talk to Big Fatty Zhang and the others about his concerns. He simply wallowed in his helplessness. One year of longevity, he thought, looking at a tree off in the distance whose leaves had already begun to turn yellow and fall to the ground. I'm just like that tree, and those falling leaves are just like my one lost year of longevity. Having reached this point in his train of thought, Bai Xiaochun suddenly felt very sentimental. During the course of the past month, he had come up with countless ideas on how to restore the lost longevity, and yet, that white hair on his head remained as white as ever. He made some roundabout inquiries of Big Fatty Zhang and learned that in the cultivation world, methods did indeed exist which could restore longevity. However, such methods were either well-kept secrets or as easy to track down as a phoenix feather or a chilean horn. Soon, he even lost interest in eating and drinking, and his face became wan and pallid. Eventually, he decided that he had no choice but to give up and accept the fact that he had lost the longevity. However, the following day when he went out on an oven supply run, he happened to catch sight of an enormous stone steel below the third peak, and all of a sudden, he started to pant. On the south bank of the Spirit Stream sect, all of the mountain peaks had stone steels like this one. It was covered with dense script, lines and lines of writing that glittered with bright light. Occasionally, the lines of script would flow like water as old characters were replaced by new ones. That stone steel was where missions were handed out by the Spirit String sect. Anyone in the sect who wanted to could accomplish the missions to earn the Spirit Stones necessary for cultivation as well as merit points. The merit points could be used to pay admission fees to scripture sermons or the Magical Arts Pavilion. They could also be used to gain access to all sorts of special places in the sect set aside for certain aspects of cultivation. Virtually everything in the sect could be acquired with merit points, and they were actually viewed as more valuable than spirit stones. At the moment, quite a few outer sect disciples were gathered around the Third Peak's mission steel, staring at the missions. When one of them selected a mission to take, they would respectfully notify the middle-aged cultivator sitting cross-legged beneath the steel. There were even some servants mingling with the outer sect disciples. The servants wore their uniforms, and the outer sect disciples wore green robes embroidered with cloud and river designs, making it very easy to tell who was who. There were certain missions that only inner sect disciples could accept, but missions like that wouldn't show up on this particular stone steel. The missions here could be accepted by outer sect disciples and servants alike. Many ambitious servants viewed this place as their first step in becoming that like fish which leaped over the dragon gate, achieving a meteoric rise. Bai Xiaochun stood there for the time it takes an incense stick to burn, face grim as he stared at one particular line of script in the middle of the stone steel. Eventually, a look of hesitation appeared in his eyes. Age prolonging longevity enhancing pill, he murmured. I never imagined that this stone steel would offer a medicinal pill like that as a reward. From the name alone, you can tell that the pill probably increases longevity. After a bit of thought, he approached the middle-aged cultivator. When the outer sect disciples sensed by Xiaochun approaching, they completely ignored him. Considering their status, they didn't care at all about servants, who they viewed as beneath them. 
By Xiaochen waited until the crowd around the middle-aged cultivator thinned a bit, then, looking as charming and innocent as possible, clasped hands and bowed in greeting. Good afternoon, elder brother, he said. The middle-aged cultivator looked by Xiaochun up and down, then nodded slightly. The problem of his own longevity swirled in by Xiaochun's mind as he asked, Elder brother, one of the missions is to go search for some medicinal plants. The reward is an age-prolonging longevity-enhancing pill. Might I ask whether or not that pill is useful for extending longevity? Age-prolonging longevity-enhancing pill. Yeah, it's this mission right here. That pill really can prolong your age and enhance your longevity. In fact, it adds a whole year. However, it has a lot of limitations. It can only be used if you are at the fifth level of qi condensation or lower and can only be consumed once. If you take the pill more than one time, it simply won't do anything. You could say that it's valuable, but unfortunately, one year of longevity doesn't really count for much. Seeing how charming and innocent Bai Xiaochun looked, the middle-aged cultivator decided to add a bit more information. Generally speaking, this is a pill that disciples will give to their mortal family members who are reaching the ends of their lives. However, it's still very expensive. Do you want to accept the mission? Bai Xiaochun looked back at the stone steel, did some calculations, and then nodded. The middle-aged cultivator waved his finger at the stone steel, and the mission turned gray. At the same time, he produced a jade slip which he handed over to Bai Xiaochun. Green spirit leaf, earth dragon fruit, and stone beetle husk, the man said coolly. Collect the proper amounts of those three medicinal ingredients, and you can exchange them for an age-prolonging longevity-enhancing pill. After that, he paid no further heed to Bai Xiaochun, and instead turned and began to explain other missions to the nearby outer sect disciples. Bai Xiaochun left, clutching the jade slip in his hands, the term age-prolonging longevity-enhancing pill echoing about in his mind. His eyes began to glow with decisiveness. I'm definitely going to get that medicinal pill and make up for the one year of longevity I lost. Bursting with determination, he hurried to the Four C's room where he poured over the information available to servants. He soon found an introduction to green spirit leaf, a type of medicinal plant that only grew in habitats occupied by hope spirit birds. Hope spirit birds lived in large colonies and usually grew to the second level of qi condensation, making the green spirit leaf difficult to harvest. As a result, it tended to be expensive. Unfortunately, there was no record in the Four C's room of the earth dragon fruit or the stone beetle husk. Bai Xiaochun patted his bag, smiled bitterly, and left. After returning to the ovens, he asked Big Fatty Zhang and the others about them. Nobody had ever heard of Earth Dragon Fruit, but Third Fatty Hay knew about Stone Beetle Husk. According to him, it was nothing more than the molted exoskeleton of a type of spirit insect called a stone beetle. Supposedly, those exoskeletons were extremely tough and heavy, but were uncommon on the South Shore. However, they were common on the North Shore, a result of the fact that most of the techniques they cultivated there were shamanic magics. Unfortunately, despite the fact that both the North and South Shores were part of the Spirit Stream sect, they were separated by the main mountain bridge. Furthermore, only inner sect disciples qualified to be able to cross that mountain bridge to get from one shore to the other. What are you asking about these medicinal ingredients for? Big Fatty Zhang asked, patting his stomach. You can't eat them, you know. Besides, if you try to buy them at the South Bank Market, the prices are ridiculously high. When Bai Xiaochun heard the word market mentioned, his eyes suddenly lit up. After offering a quick explanation, he hurried down the mountain. In the year he had been a part of the ovens, he had only been out of the sect on a few occasions, and yet was very familiar with the market outside of the sect. Most of the stalls were run by various cultivator clans related to sect disciples. There were even some establishments that were owned by disciples and catered specifically to other disciples. Gradually, a set of unspoken rules had come to be established that everyone abided by. Generally speaking, any supplies that the ovens needed could be found here. Bai Xiaochun strolled around the market for a while and visited several medicinal plant shops. By the time he got back to the ovens, his brow was furrowed and he was heaving sighs left and right. What a ripoff! Especially the earth dragon fruit. All it is is a kind of fruit that grows underground. Why is it so expensive? Bai Xiaochun was dismayed to discover that, given his current situation, he was essentially incapable of getting the age-prolonging longevity-enhancing pill. He basically had no concept of money. 
To him, no amount of wealth could compare to longevity. Unfortunately, he was currently embarrassingly short on funds. Furthermore, he knew that although his elder brothers possessed extremely ample bellies, their bags were as empty as his. They definitely weren't any richer than he was, although nobody would go to the trouble of calling them to task for eating a bit of the food from the oven's supplies. If they tried to sell that food, the supervisor's department would definitely catch on and would not be happy. After thinking about the matter from numerous angles, Bai Xiaocheng couldn't come up with any ideas for how to make some money other than to sell some spirit-enhanced items. However, that didn't quite seem like the appropriate thing to do. He continued to ponder the matter for a few more days. On one particular morning, he was sitting cross-legged in his hut practicing cultivation when he heard the sound of bells echoing out through the sect. The sound wasn't very loud and quickly faded away. Bai Xiaocheng slowly opened his eyes. He wasn't surprised by the tolling of the bells. In fact, they rang out every month. He had learned from Big Fatty Zhang that the bells indicated that a trial by fire was beginning for servants. Whoever succeeded would be given a spot as an outer sect disciple. For those extremely ambitious servants who wanted to become outer sect disciples, the first step to becoming the fish who leaped over the dragon gate was to reach the third level of qi condensation. Then they could select one of the trials by fire. The trials by fire were nothing more than a path of stone steps that led to the top of the mountain peak. However, that path was imbued with magical power, making each step extremely arduous. Anyone who managed to make it to the top would be qualified to become an outer sect disciple. Unfortunately, spots in the outer sect were limited, so only the first three competitors to the top, the best of the best, would be able to get in. After all, there were many servants in the spirit stream sect. There were thousands and thousands on the south bank alone. Therefore, there were always fierce struggles to succeed. Of course, the members of the ovens would rather die of starvation in the ovens than try to climb the ladder in the outer sect. Therefore, on this particular day every month, they turned their noses up at all the hustle and bustle. Bai Xiaocheng closed his eyes. However, a moment later, they snapped open and a strange expression could be seen therein. Then, they began to glitter with excitement as a new idea formed in his head. He shot to his feet and began to pace back and forth inside his hut. After considering this idea for quite some time, a delighted expression appeared on his face. This is the ticket, he exclaimed. Then he pushed his door open and cried out to Big Fatty Zhang and the others, who were currently debating about which unlucky servant would be promoted to be an outer sect disciple. Elder brothers, I figured out how to get rich, but I need your help. Then, we can all get rich together. He licked his lips and looked at Big Fatty Zhang and the others, eyes gleaming. Big Fatty Zhang was familiar with this expression. It was the same look Bai Xiaochun had on his face when he brought up the idea of making the bottoms of the bowl thicker. Considering how much that idea had benefited the ovens, Big Fatty Zhang couldn't wait to hear Bai Xiaochun's idea. Ninth Fatty, what's your plan? To tell you the truth, we're all completely destitute, and it's all the fault of that damned supervisor's department. If it weren't for them, we could sell some of our stuff and get totally rich. Big Fatty Zhang clapped by Xiaochun on the shoulder, eyes shining with anticipation. Chapter 10, Elder Brother, Don't Go Bai Xiaochun looked around at his elder brothers, who were staring at him with eyes that glittered like spirit stones. Big Fatty Zhang's eyes looked like they were about to erupt with flames. Bai Xiaochun cleared his throat, feeling more than a little bit proud of himself. Elder Brother, check this out. The three mountain peaks of the spirit stream sect all have a trial by fire every month, giving us servants a chance to become like the fish that leaped over the dragon gate, right? Bai Xiaochun glanced around at everyone, looking like the picture of charm and innocence. Big Fatty Zhang nodded in response. However, the sect only wants the best of the best. Therefore, no matter how many people participate in the trial by fire, only the top three disciples per mountain peak get picked. Am I right? He licked his lips, and his eyes were beginning to shine. Big Fatty Zhang listened thoughtfully. A ruminative expression could also be seen on Third Fatty Hay's face, although everyone else seemed confused. Big Fatty Zhang looked at Bai Xiaochun, and his eyes also began to shine. Do you mean? Considering the levels of your cultivation bases, elder brothers, and mine, it would be easy to sweep the trials by fire of all three mountains. Bai Xiaochun looked around at his elder brothers. 
All of them had cultivation bases at the third level of qi condensation. Big Fatty Zhang and Third Fatty Hei were actually at the peak of the third level. Were it not for the fact that they didn't want to leave the ovens and thus kept their cultivation bases suppressed, they could have broken through to the next level long ago. Therefore, Bai Xiaochun continued, speaking very quickly, all we have to is get to the peak of the mountains as quickly as possible and hold the top three spots. Then, we can sell them to whoever comes along after us. He stopped and looked at Big Fatty Zhang and the others. Big Fatty Zhang was trembling. So low down, he said. Then he took a deep breath and slapped his thigh. An unprecedentedly bright glow appeared in his eyes. The method described by Bai Xiaochun wasn't very complicated at all and was in fact quite simple. It was merely a different way of thinking that, after being spoken out loud, was easy to understand. However, before being explained, it was actually the opposite of what everyone would have thought the idea to be. Big Fatty Zhang seemed to be in the midst of spiritual enlightenment. It was as if a door had been opened, leading to a brand new type of life. He couldn't hold back from laughing heartily. Third Fatty Hay stamped an excited foot, face flushed from either embarrassment or excitement. This couldn't be any more low down. Ha ha ha. As the other fatties understood, they started getting excited. Panting, they couldn't help but stare at Bai Xiaochun with more admiration than ever. Great idea. Let's do it. Fudge. That bunch of bastards from the supervisor's department have persecuted us into poverty for years now. Thankfully, Ninth Junior Brother is here now. Let's do it. Then, they began to excitedly discuss the details of how to carry out such a plan. After they were sure that there was nothing they had overlooked, they decided to try out their scheme in the following month's trials by fire. Big Fatty Zhang slapped his thigh in delight. Tonight is snack night. Excited conversations filled the ovens. The following month was one of extreme enthusiasm. In fact, just to play it safe, everyone took time to practice cultivation, which was a rare occurrence. In the end, everyone was waiting impatiently for the day of the trial by fire to arrive. Finally, it did. The sun shone brightly in the morning sky. Beneath the three mountain peaks on the south shore of the Spirit Stream sect, an unprecedented scene was playing out. There at the entrance to each of the trails leading up the mountains, shockingly, three black walks appeared. A closer look revealed that underneath those black walks were extraordinarily formidable fatties. The sight was truly impressive. These were the nine members of the ovens, and this was, in fact, their first time attending the trials by fire held for servants at the three mountain peaks. Just as they had planned, three of their number went to each of the three mountain peaks. Large groups of servants were hurrying toward the mountain peaks from all directions, cracking their knuckles and looking very excited. Many of these servants had attempted the trials by fire on numerous occasions, only to fail in the end. For others, it was their first time attending. Everyone was both excited and nervous and hoped that they could be like a galloping divine steed and make a meteoric rise to become an outer sect disciple. As they neared the various mountain peaks, they caught sight of the fatties from the ovens. The ovens? What are they doing here? I've been a servant for nine years already and I've participated in the trials by fire 30 times. This is the first time I've ever seen anyone from the ovens here. The other servants were shocked and began to spread word. Soon, everyone was talking about the fact that all three of the mountains had people from the ovens waiting there for the trials by fire. This is big. I can't believe the ovens people all are going to vie for a spot in the outer sect. What's going on? By Xiaochun, Big Fatty Zhang and Third Fatty Hei were all waiting at the bottom of the third peak. When they heard the shocked exclamations of the other servants, they didn't react at all. In fact, their faces were so calm that it almost seemed they were away on astral journeys and were completely oblivious to all of the conversations around them. They were completely and utterly focused on the trial by fire starting line. To them, this was not the path of a trial by fire. Instead, it was a glittering, glowing road to spirit stones. Bai Xiaochun looked especially solemn, with his eyes turned up in thought. Soon, a figure could be seen floating down from the three mountains. The person to land by Bai Xiaochun and the others was a middle-aged man who had the demeanor of a transcended being. The first thing he noticed as he alighted next to the starting line was the mountain of flesh that was Big Fatty Zhang. Then he looked over at Bai Xiaochun and Third Fatty Hei. This man was the honor guard in charge of the trial by fire, and currently, his heart was filled with astonishment. Did the sun rise from the west today? He thought. 
Usually the people from the ovens would rather die than become outer sect disciples. What's going on? After blinking a few times to make sure he wasn't seeing things, an expression of encouragement appeared on the man's face. He flicked his sleeve and began to speak, his voice echoing out in all directions. Let the trial by fire for promotion to the outer sect begin. As soon as the words left his mouth, bells began to toll throughout the section. At the same time, the starting lines to the trials by fire lit up, indicating that the event had begun. Instantly, Big Fatty Zhang shot forward, an expression of extreme focus on his face. He kicked up a huge wind as he ran toward the stone steps leading up the mountain, moving so fast you might think he was being chased by a ravenous beast. Third Fatty Hay also leapt into motion behind Big Fatty Zhang, a brutal gleam in his eyes that seemed to indicate that anyone who tried to overtake him on the path was threatening his life. In third place was Bai Xiaochun, who leapt onto the path as quickly as a rabbit, thinking about nothing else but the age-prolonging longevity-enhancing pill. In the blink of an eye, the three of them were dashing madly up the path. All of that happened so quickly that the other servants barely had time to react. Their faces immediately fell and, gritting their teeth, they scrambled onto the path and began to climb toward the peak. Similar scenes played out on the other two mountains, with the fatties from the ovens instantly taking the lead. The third mountain peak was known as Fragrant Cloud Peak, and currently Bai Xiaochun and his companions were flying along the trial by fire path, far ahead of everyone else. However, it didn't take long before they felt increasing pressure weighing down on them, forcing them to slow their pace. Bai Xiaochun looked around and realized that seven or eight people were closing in behind him. Suddenly, he was filled with a feeling of anxiety. It was as if these people were on the verge of stealing his age-prolonging longevity-enhancing pill. Taking away my age-prolonging longevity-enhancing pill is the same as taking away my life. He suddenly held his breath, causing his face to turn scarlet. Then he sent spiritual energy streaming out into his body, which formed into a powerful, surging force. All of a sudden, he charged forward like wild boar whose tail had just been stepped on. In the blink of an eye, his speed more than doubled, and he had passed third fatty hay and even big fatty Zhang. Third Fatty Hay let out a roar and then used some unknown technique to similarly increase his speed and suddenly pass up Big Fatty Zhang and race closer to Bai Xiaochun. Seeing that he had just been passed by his two companions, Big Fatty Zhang started getting anxious. He took a deep breath and then, all of a sudden, his rolls of fat seemed to shrink. It was almost as if he was burning his fat in exchange for a burst of speed. Rumbling sounds could be heard as he closed the distance between himself and Third Fatty Hay. Soon, all three of them were speeding along rapidly. When the servants behind them saw what was happening, their jaws dropped in shock. Looks of despair appeared on their faces, and yet, they weren't willing to give up so easily and pushed onward with all the strength they could muster. Unfortunately, there was nothing they could do to catch up with Bai Xiaochun and the others. Their tempers having reached the limit, they began to cry out curses. Damn it! Are they high on aphrodisiacs or something? How could they be so fast? Soon, enough time had passed for an incense stick to burn, and Bai Xiaochun had already reached the top of the mountain. In fact, he could even see two outer sect disciples standing just beyond the finish line, waiting there to receive the servants. As soon as the two outer sect disciples caught sight of Bai Xiaochun, they smiled slightly, and one of them said, Congratulations, Junior BR. However, before he could even finish speaking, his eyes went wide with shock. Bai Xiaochun barreled along a few more paces, but then screeched to a halt a mere step in front of the finish line. He stood there looking at the outer sect disciples, and they looked back at him. Then, he gave them a charming smile and spun to face the other direction. Stop, he roared, throwing his hands up into the air. Instantly, Third Fatty Hei and Big Fatty Zhang wheezed to a stop next to him. The three of them stood there looking at each other, breathing heavily. Then, they broke out into laughter. The two outer sect disciples exchanged dismayed glances, unsure of what exactly was happening. The fact that these three suddenly stopped running at this point seemed to indicate that they were crazy. Junior Brothers, one of the outer sect disciples said cautiously, the three of you are the first to arrive at the finish line. Just step on over and you will be promoted into the outer sect. Outer sect disciples? Big Fatty Zhang said, waving his hand dismissively. Who wants to become outer sect disciples? He continued to stand there along with Third Fatty Hay, two mountains of flesh who completely blocked the exit gate. Bai Xiaochun sat down in front of them, jaw tilted up as he waited, lofty and proud. 
The two outer sect disciples didn't seem pleased. Huh? If you don't want to be outer sect disciples, then what are you doing here? Are you people crazy or something? Big Fatty Zhang, Third Fatty Hei, and Bai Xiaochun pretended not to have heard and kept their eyes focused further on down the mountain. Soon, enough time had passed for an incense stick to burn. Finally, a long-faced servant struggled up the path, gasping and wheezing. When he saw Bai Xiaochun and the others, he immediately sighed. However, his eyes burned with an unyielding light. This was his ninth time participating in the trial by fire, and this was the first time he'd even come close to winning. But then, along came the people from the ovens. Looking furious, he was just about to turn to leave when Bai Xiaochun shot to his feet and yelled, Elder brother, don't go. Come, come. You know what? I just can't bear to leave the ovens. All of a sudden, I don't want to be an outer sect disciple after all. Maybe I should give my spot up. The long-faced servant stared in shock for a moment, and then his eyes began to shine. 